And we're back with the Bible man himself. Oh, Jesus. Oh. RP1 Sensi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mike Sensi. Why do you keep doing it? Just say Mike. You don't okay, have to, yeah. okay, sure, sure. And you're back with two Navy SEALs. <laughs> no, I am excited to be here. You are one of my closest friends. I've known you for many years now. Uh, you forced your friendship upon me, I want to say 2019. Come on, come get it. <laughs> no, so you're in Kokomo doing your thing, being terrified yeah. as a young man. What am I gonna do? How am I gonna make my father and my mother proud? Ooh. That is Navy boot camp. It's really quite simple. It's so good, but not as good as you were at calling your boss a coward no. at work. My son is going to be a Marine Corps sniper. He talks to you for 10 fucking seconds and now he's a Navy SEAL. How the fuck does that happen? And I go, your son's none of those things. <laughs> There's a clip. We're going to investigate whether or not Cat Williams was a Marine. His unit left him in some country. And he I mean, that's not what Bo Bergdahl yeah. says. <laughs> but every anytime I go to an Army school on an Army base and I eat at an Army chow hall, I'm just like, this food is wet. Why is it so wet? Big Army, you have 40 minutes to respond. <laughs> they were still in boot camps. They were in boot camp talking shit to us. We're down. Wearing fucking go fasters yeah, and exactly. shit. Yeah, yeah, and they're in camelbacks eating their wet food. Like, oh, look at these pussy squids. I actually was like, you know what would make my life better? Mm. Using your your trauma to accelerate my professional online career. Now you sound like every other organization that's wanting me to work with them. Yeah, so. I do sound yeah. like your ex-co-host. Hey. Anyways, this episode was sponsored by ReMedical. Every veteran deserves respect, competency, and clarity when pursuing a disability claim. Of course, we all know the frustration is much more common. If you're looking for a better path and documentation that strengthens your disability rating request, start with our sponsor, ReMedical. Ree's team of professionals work with a network of experienced physicians. And they've already provided meaningful medical evidence for more than 25,000 veterans. And while they can't guarantee what the VA will decide, 95%, let me say that again, 95% of their clients reported receiving a disability rating of 70% or higher. That's because when you connect with ReMedical, they take the time to explain your options before you pay for anything. Free consultations. So don't give up on a stall process or settle for an unfavorable decision from the VA. Cut through the frustration with accurate medical evidence and a streamlined approach that allows you to pursue your claim confidently. Head over to remedical.com. That's Romeo Echo Echo Medical.com to book your free consultation. Check out our link in the podcast section for more details. And welcome back to the amazing, the incredible. 12th episode of the After Action Podcast. I'm joined today by the man, myth, legend, the one who is the most catfished oh. military member of all time. Right into that, yeah. Yeah. God's protector. Right. The real life Bible man. Oh. Indiana's favorite son. There we go, finally. Finally. Yeah, we're, we're in here. <laughs> RP1 Mike Sensi. Oh, thank you for using my government thing on top of it. Hey, thanks, thanks for having me, man. Appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, so you were telling me, what's the secret <laughs> password to the government? Uh, I, I, yeah, no, they haven't given me it yet. Uh, I'm still still lower level when it comes to actually getting secrets. So hmm, We'll see. We've got a <laughs> little bit of time to get into it. Just two dudes hanging out. We've had quite a little Nashville day. We started out yeah. working out separately. Didn't like that, but... Time. Well, I, to be fair, I had a small hotel gym to work out at, and you didn't invite me to your big fancy one. So you can come tomorrow. Um, uh, well, I'm leaving tomorrow. But. Well, you can extend, dude. You're a single guy, and you've got nothing to do right now. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, I just I've got to get back. Got my dog games. at home. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. We'll make no. something happen. Yeah. No, I I had activities this morning. I couldn't. Blah 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 blah. I'm a dad. Um, but we got pancakes. We got pancakes. We went to the famous. Yeah. Didn't have to stand in line. No. They knew, right who, they knew who you were, and you got right in. Yeah, I literally, you didn't see him, but I, I slipped, I broke off a few. No, you walked in with a cardboard sign around your neck, <laughs> and it just said pancakes, question mark, and they let you right in. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I love having a laugher. I love don't it. do it, that. It, it, it don't ma- do that. No, no, don't, no. I love it because that. it makes me feel better, and I'll get more loose, and I'll tell you all the secrets that you want to hear. Yeah, I, I want to see it. Yeah, yeah. Your life's great, but if it doesn't serve <laughs> me, then what's the point? That's literally right? what he DM'd me years ago. <laughs> yeah, I, that's how it works. Yeah. yeah, I actually was like, you know what would make my life better? Mm. Using your trauma to accelerate my professional online career. Now you sound like every other organization that's wanting me to work with them. Yeah, so. I do sound yeah. like your ex-co-host. Hey. Anyways, come on, come get it. <laughs> um, come on. Stupid. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's yeah. all right. It's all right. No, I am excited to be here. You are one of... My closest friends. I've known you for many years now. Yes. Uh, you forced your friendship upon me, I want to say, 2019, 2020 time frame. 
2020 COVID ish. Yeah. COVID ish. Yeah. 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 Right when you started your kind of venture into what you've become. Congratulations, by the way, and everything. This Mm -hmm. is about me, so I'm going to give you your flowers up front. Yeah. Um, But you kind of were like, hey, thinking of doing this thing Mm -hmm. where I have a cardboard sign. I was like, who is this? You know, how'd you get this number? All that. (laughs) And then once we got past all that, um, you kind of soft launched uh, your idea to me, so it's really yeah. cool to see it come to what it's become. Yeah, you were you were there at the uh, workshop meetings. Yes, I was. You were, you were there in the the writing room. I was. <laughs> yeah, we even have a shared note where it, we go over. Oh, we do, don't we? We do. I, I thought I deleted that. It keeps coming back though. You you have punch up. <laughs> you have punch ups. I have punch up power. That's right. Mm. <laughs> but before we came together, yes, you were just a young man. Correct. Still am. Go ahead. <clears throat> A younger man, excuse me. Mm. You were a younger man in, uh, what is it? Dang, I can't remember. Uh, Indie. Oh, oh, where where are my my origins? I am a Hoosier. Where's my camera? I am a Hoosier. And uh, for anyone who's who's, um, (laughs) not acquainted with that. Right. And a native of the greatest state in the world, Indiana. 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 That is correct, yes. I, I hail from Kokomo, Indiana, that area, northern Indiana. <laughs> Are you and being for real? I, uh, yeah. It's called Kokomo? Do not, if you sing that, I will walk out of here. Like if you sing that Beach, Beach Boys, Boys song? song? God <laughs> like, <it>. oh. <sighs> You know what that is? That's some Midwestern propaganda right oh there. Oh, my God. Someone was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. What if we named it Kokomo? <laughs> <laughs> That'll get him here to this uh, landlocked, flat country. Listen, Lord, have there's not water anywhere around there. <laughs> no, 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 there's not. Ooh, there's India. There's Jamaica. Oh my God. Ooh, don't uh, get flagged for this. <laughs> nah, I don't, not that. We'll get him to cut it. But so it's literally named. Who came up with that? Who named Kokomo? I have no idea. Steve Kokomo. I think. Was yeah, that I, I believe it was Brendan Kokomo the first. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My father's traveled here from the island of Kokomo. <laughs> he sees this flat land and he sees paradise. We we left our lush island community yeah. to find these cornfields. <laughs> we will put a factory here and an Applebee's here. Yeah. Kokomo. We will call it home. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. We will poison the, we will poison the natural resources <laughs> with GMO products. Corn syrup will will <laughs> will, fl- <laughs> will flood the state. That's good. Yeah, yeah. No, that's a good pitch for Kokomo. <laughs> Kokomo. Yeah. Hi, guys. Going to Indiana? Go check out Kokomo. Or don't. You're how fine. do you spell it? You're fine. Fu- like, exactly literally? how, yeah. Dude. What? <laughs> if, if Jamaica gets a good lawyer. Right, right. Was it, it, isn't Jamaica Kokomo? Yeah, Ooh, no. I want to take you. Well, no, that's, I mean, that's the song. I don't really know where Kokomo actually is. There it is. The I city know. of first. The, oh, no. The city of first. Definitely not first with Kokomo. No. Since yeah. 1884. Mm-hmm. Blas, could you please pull up, like, <laughs> is there another Co- Kokomo the island? I'm curious. <laughs> Yes, that's yeah, correct. I, yeah, 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 I got that. I got that. <laughs> but did you see the scenery, <laughs> the luscious, the one bridge that's there? Is that the one bridge? Uh, there's more than that, but that's... You got two bridges? Ah, uh, you know, I, we don't like to count our bridges. <laughs> 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 we like to be humble. Yeah, yeah. You know. As you steal names? Yeah, yeah. Maybe it's native, uh, native or something? Native American, maybe? Well, I mean, it's Indiana, <laughs> so Indian's in the name. Is that really why? Yeah, I, I didn't imagine. know that. I, well, to be fair, I mean, like, I am, now we're getting to the backstory of me, I am uh, mainly Cherokee Indian is my DNA, so, like, there's big tribes in Indiana, like, Ohio and stuff like that. That's so, what's up. Yeah. Who's that come from, um, your mother or father? It comes from the mother. Can I say your mother's name? I mean, Tina deserves flowers, I guess. Dude, Tina, <laughs> Tina. Tina, yeah. I love Carl and Tina. We have mentioned Kokomo and Carl and Tina in the first 10 minutes, and that's the most flowers yeah. that entire region's gotten in so long. Carl, you're welcome. Yeah, yeah. All right, teen. <laughs> you know what I mean? Hey. Uh, hey. Yeah. Hey. I like that. You know what's funny about that photo right there? Yeah. I'm about to save that one. <laughs> City of Kokomo City Hall is that there's uh, a scenery, but it's not attractive enough. <laughs> so yeah. They, they put a photo next to it, and they're like, this is what we meant. This is what we meant. <laughs> <laughs> Oops, this, this is what we meant. This is what we were shooting I, for. I, I'm actually kind of like... I'm actually kind of curious to see like what the um, where original Kokomo comes from. Well, no, I don't care about that. Uh, pretty much like if you Google Kokomo, Indiana, yeah, beyond all these gorgeous, gorgeous. <laughs> oh my God, you see, I'm, I'm, I hate this, but because <laughs> it's home. And um, if like, what is the big articles that come from Kokomo, Indiana? I remember the big thing when I was like senior year in high school. The big story was we were gonna get a Chick Fil A. 
and then it never happened because it was a hoax. And that was like our national news <laughs> that we were going to get a Chick-fil-A. And that was like never on did. the news? The oh, no, it was a news? big fucking deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, some kid from my high school started a rumor, and then it made it to the papers, which is news in Indiana. Yeah. Um, and they were like, yeah, future spot of Chick-fil-A. And then it turned out it just wasn't true. You got catfished into Yeah, a exactly, yeah. So we got catfished into thinking we were getting a Chick-fil-A. Yeah. And then you're like, huh. This might be something that happens in my life a lot yeah, later, yeah. Yeah. which we will touch on. <laughs> oh, man. This is, I, but what's it like growing up in Kokomo, Indiana? I don't know. So Well, it's funny. So I say Kokomo because that's the biggest region, kind of. But it's much like, you know, being from any state and you say, like, um, like say you're from Nashville, but it's like cool you're from place, some. Yeah. yeah, it's all right. Good pancakes. <laughs> but um, they you're from, like, some weird suburb. So I grew up on, like, Logan's Fort Road, which anybody from, not anybody from Indiana, anybody from my kind of area knows what I'm talking about. It's just outside Kokomo. I grew up in the middle of nowhere, essentially. Like, neighbors were, like, super, super far away. Is it cornfields? Super flat. Like, we were surrounded, like, the movie Signs, like, that's, like, the house. Really? I grew up in. Which, can we talk about the movie Signs real quick? Yeah, just real quick. About the movie signs. As, yeah. as somebody who grew up in, the, I was middle school when that movie came out, I yeah. believe, something like that. And for it to be a movie about aliens coming through the cornfield yeah ask me when i slept since i saw probably, that movie. probably never i have not slept since i saw that movie and they were like coming through the cornfields that to me was a nightmare because we grew up but a huge backyard which immediately led into huge like miles of cornfields in the backyard and on the right side miles and miles of cornfields so when you would just sit there and like when the stock was tall you would just hear the corn just rustling all the time. So if really? I went outside, oh, of course, yeah, because it's cornfields. So you talked after, about like it's commonplace, but well, yeah. I guess <laughs> if you grew up in a cornfield like I did. Oh, okay, um, sorry. No, but it's like you would sit there and hear the wind, and it was just, and I was like, here they, here they come, here they come. Yeah, that was my entire. Yeah, I grew up. Dude, that with those was noises. such a good movie. That's a great movie. It's such a good movie. I, all of it's great. The 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 tension, the way they capture all of it, mm -hmm. but like the favorite part where he's he, there, he's like, I'm gonna enjoy this meal. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he's just eating. Most typical Midwest dad. Yeah. 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 Is that what did Carl come in and do? Oh, that? Oh, Carl has come in and said, I'm gonna enjoy this meal. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Many times. That's yeah. great because it's it's you. You have a brother and how many sisters? Yeah. So I got three siblings. Um. And then obviously my two parents. So we grew up in a house of six. And it wasn't a very big house. It was nice. And, and you're the eldest. I'm um, second oldest. I have an older sister. So okay. it's my uh, my older sister, myself, younger brother, younger sister. Did did uh, your family farm the corn? No, no, no. we were you not. Saw it. You we just... were just blue collar people um, in a blue collar kind of area. So no, we lived next to a lot of farmers. But my mother was always a uh, emergency room nurse, and my dad was an electrical contractor. So about as blue collar as you can get. Those are pretty cool jobs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those no, are like they, trades. Uh, yeah, no, they they kept us at um, kind of middle income to higher since we, you know, they've since moved to a lake house since they're empty nesters, Carl yeah. and Tina, but. Um, they're lake people now. They are lake people. They they're are lake no. People. They're not just lake people. They're Indiana lake people. What's the difference? Oh, it's uh, I think the racism. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it's you see the neighbors of the lake. <laughs> These images are fantastic. Uh, you see the. How uh, tall is your corn? About one Indiana. Well, yeah. High. Well, no, because you you would ask like how what's the state? I don't know. I don't want to get into weird yeah. old verbiage, but like you yeah. say, hey, what's the stock? And they would you would do that. Mm -hmm. Um, so wait, hang on. You're telling me about your parents' racist lake. <laughs> yeah, so they live in the racist lake. <laughs> no, I just I think it's it's funny because they have like, it's a it's a really nice lake house, and everybody there on the lake is just kind of minds themselves. You see a lot of um, different flags for different organizations, even though it's in the middle of Indiana. You know what I mean? You would think that it, some of those things wouldn't reach there. You see a lot at a lot of different flags. I'll say that. Mm. Yes, and everyone you just thought of is yes. <laughs> Here's my can I. Can I uh, can I cook on flags for a second? Let yeah, go ahead and cook. <laughs> hey, hey, let God cook. Oh my God. Um, no, he, here's something that I really think should happen, and uh, I think we need to get rid of all the flags. Every single flag, except for okay. branches of service. Okay, I'm okay with that. States, federal, that's it. Okay, because I don't like like all. Of the like weird different like this one's for firefighters, this one's for mm, cops, this mm. one's for veterans, this one's for this community, blah blah mm. blah 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 blah. That is what the American flag stands for. Oh, interesting. You don't because if you go to other countries, yeah, they have just like their flag. If they do, obviously Americans have, or we are the most proud because we're in charge of stuff. And uh, don't forget it. <laughs> but like literally, it's just weird that we've like broken it down to like these really subsects when. And this is just because, you know, you and I have traveled abroad and whatever, but, like, that's what we should have more of is, like, just 
those two flags. Like, really, I think states. Uh, I mean, I, I think I, states are yeah. cool. I think states are cool, really, because what you're talking about with a state, really, you're talking about like a region that you grew up in. Yeah, a small culture, mm -hmm. but like nationally, I don't think we need all the other like. There's like a POW flag, or like that's. I mean, that's fine. I guess I just I don't. When I see the American flag, I see all of those things, huh. and that is what. I think we're kind of missing when we kind of break it up. But. So you're saying the American flag is kind of like a big pot of gumbo. You just throw everything in it, and it covers everything. I mean, you and I have been in different places. Do you think they? <laughs> nobody has the freedoms that we have, no, right? I, I mean, a thousand percent, yeah. So, yeah. like, that's what I see when I see the flag. Hmm. Like, I'm like, we have that. That's cool. I don't know why we have to, like, specialize it to a way to where it honestly kind of waters down the meaning of everything. Right. Like, you're not going to... No, you're not going to not get pulled over because you didn't have a thin blue line or somebody's not going to come, you know, put the fire out of your house because you don't have a thin red. Like, I hate even, I hate the language I'm using right hmm. now. Well, that also, it's very American in that, like, everybody who wants something unique to them, so they feel special. Everybody wants to feel special, right? So everybody has to have something that's unique to them. See, look at, look at all these flags. That's a lot of flags. That's what I'm saying. There's just too many flags, and I'm not going to go into like my opinions based on them. I just sure. think in, in general, like it's <laughs> you can. It's your show. <laughs> I can. It'll be the last episode. Um, no. So what what we're missing is we're missing the thing about American society that really makes us great. Like, um, for instance, uh, Chris Chris Craighead. He was in a situation where he wanted to talk about something that happened and. His country doesn't have free speech the way we do, and right, he got in right, trouble right. for it. Mm -hmm. He didn't even say anything. Yeah. But, like, that's there's these things that happen. Like, it's just, I don't know. I think we just need to go back to just, like, state and American flags only. Okay. That's my only two cents on it. I never had an opinion on it, so I just... Well, I, what, I, what do you I, say? I, as far as flags, I've never thought as much about flags in my life. I, I, I don't even know, what flag, I don't even know what flag day is. You know what I mean? Is it? <laughs> I know it's a day. I don't know... Um, no, I, I, yeah, I mean, it makes sense. I see where you're coming from as far as, like, the, you know, stars and stripes representing all the things. Yeah. But at the same time, you don't want to be represented by all the things. If if you're somebody who wants their own flags, yeah. then you don't want to be represented by one overarching thing. That's kind of the point, too. That's what makes America great, too, because you can have your own subcultures. Here's my thing about the American flag. Okay. If you're in trouble and you're somewhere else in the world, yeah, yeah. that's the number one fucking thing you're looking oh, for. Oh, a thousand percent, yeah. And that should be replicated. Like if, if, oh, I agree. I'm if, team, oh, yeah. I have two rules when I'm trying, I tell my daughters this. If you travel abroad, here's the one thing you know. Where's the embassy and where's the McDonald's? Yeah, yeah. Right, <laughs> right, right, Because, like, you can eat at McDonald's anywhere you'll live, and if things get really hairy, you can go to an embassy. Yeah. That's the flag you're looking for. That's true. That's very mm. true. Anyways, Kokomo. <laughs> <laughs> that's a flag, I believe. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> How many does it have? <laughs> <laughs> no, I just I I don't know. I I don't the things that make America unique are the things that, that um I think we're kind of losing in general cuz mm. we're like we're like you said everyone wants to, wants to feel special and have yeah. their own thing but like I think everyone just needs to travel to different countries once or twice and then just oh, yeah, yeah. try and find water. No. Yeah, no exactly. No, I I agree a thousand percent. That's Try why. and find water. I, and that's why I think at this age in my life experience I don't hold credence to anybody who's like oh well this nation so i don't think about it because i know the truth yeah me like you said me i've been yeah. to many austere lands yeah. outside you know these great borders and i'm just like man i oof, i cannot wait to get back <laughs> like yeah. um but you call this a country yeah yeah yeah, yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> yeah so um yeah no i just i i don't really fight it too hard because i know the truth and i appreciate what i have mm -hmm. and i don't want to you know who am i to tell somebody oh what to think or you know because their opinion they're not gonna change your mind i mean if they maybe uh, yeah, yeah okay <laughs> when's the last time you got something to actually change their mind about a hard opinion truly and not like oh i'm on the fence but like especially this day and age where everybody has hard and fact <laughs> knowledge about everything apparently there no one's changed their mind about shit not that i'm aware of yeah that's what i'm saying not that people and maybe that's the thing too people like i've changed my mind on stuff all the time i do too but i keep it to myself yeah that's the problem yeah right? Real G's move in silence like Lagania. Lagania, am I saying that right? <clears throat> Little Wayne once said, <laughs> "Real G's move in silence." <laughs> Little Wayne once said, "Real G's move in silence like lasagna." Yeah, that's what he said. Not Lagania. I, I believe it's pronounced Lagania. Can we Google Lagania? <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, my guy. <laughs> Yeah, I know it's lasagna. Yeah. You fool. Anyways, you this episode fool. is sponsored by Garfield. <laughs> um, Do you hate Mondays? Garfield. Garfield. <laughs> Isn't that something? No, so you're in Kokomo doing your thing, being terrified yeah. as a young man, but you're looking yes. around. What am I going to do? How am I going to make my father and my mother proud? Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> 
Um, so no, I was always kind of a kid. Um, I went to a very small like farm high school. Our graduating class had like ninety some people in it. For real? Yeah, yeah it was very very small. Um, I played sports and stuff. I was also like, I was in drama club. I was in I was in drumline. I fucking did like uh, metal bands outside of school. So. I was kind of an artsy kid, but I also played sports and stuff. That's kind of the only reason I graduated high school, just because yeah. I was just the most likable person. Um, I didn't do homework ever. <laughs> so, like, ever, not once did I ever take home an assignment ever. And all the teachers, every time they met my mother for parent teacher, they would be like, Michael is very smart, but he's not, he doesn't do anything. <laughs> he uh-huh. doesn't cause trouble, but he doesn't yeah. do anything. Carl's so we're like, going to give him a C. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, I mean, yeah. yeah. Nobody we know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we know. They don't smoke, but they did during this conference. They did during there. Yeah. 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 Um, so no, I was always, I don't know. I was always, I kind of felt trapped. And as much as I am a loud and proud Hoosier now, um, I, very, I felt very trapped. You know, small house, big family, bigger family. And I just like. I don't want to stay here. I don't. I know I don't want to like work in factories. I worked for my dad for a summer for his company, um, doing electrical construction. And my God, holy fuck! If you do that work, like mm-hmm. I was up at fucking three in the morning, yeah. drove to a job site to start uh-huh. a fight. Like holy, fu- I hated that. Is I it was, union work up there? Yeah, I believe. Okay. I believe so. I'm not yeah, totally yeah. sure, but yeah, I know, man. I and I remember I was like a week in. And I, I mean, they had me do. I wasn't trained to do any of this. They were just like, "Oh, this manager's son, fucking give him just things to tie to get, yeah. like, just stay out of the fucking way." You're counting like wire. Nuts oh and yeah, stuff. I was. Oh, yeah. I, I was like organizing like equipment rooms and stuff. Oh yeah, I was just like, "Here's a wrench. Anybody need a wrench? Like, get away from us." Like, yeah. um, but uh, so I was doing that, and even when I was doing that, there would be like guys. Uh, that would come up to me. I mean, they looked like they were seventy, but I'm sure they were like twenty three. Yeah, like, just like, look, like really, they've been. I'm fifteen. Oh yeah, they look terrible, yeah. but. Come up to me, missing teeth and shit. Be like, so, wh- what's your plans after high school? And I was like, I don't know. I guess go to college. And they were just—I remember them laughing in my face and like, we got a fucking college kid. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, it's—I felt like that's a pretty normal uh, kind of progression. And they were just like, fuck you, go get college. Yeah. yeah, go sit by the border, John. College, you yeah. fuck. Yeah, they were—I I don't know. So you I like just, reading, boy? Yeah, no, it was yeah. very much like that. <laughs> like this multi-syllable motherfucker, yeah. you know. And so I was like, they okay. better me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it was a lot of that. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. And uh, so I was like, man, I don't know. I, I can't do this. Where money was great, obviously, and stuff. And yeah, it's what you have no bi- you have no bills, and you're just, yeah, you know, you counting them off. So I was just like, man, I, I I'm not built for this work. I'm too artistic, clearly. And so I was like, my parents had served in the Air Force in the 80s, right? That's how they met. They met in the Air Force. And um, they didn't really talk about it, not because it was like, oh, they don't talk about it. They just both served a little bit of time and got out. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? It wasn't like a huge part of their life. But yeah. they talked about it. I'd seen pictures and stuff. And so my parents were kind of like, look, you got to do something. You don't want to go to college. You don't want to work around here. You got to do something. Yeah. And so they put the idea we hate in my head. You. Yeah, yeah, we. you need to get off our couch. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I, I did a bunch of non-starter jobs. I mean, I worked like in a hotel. You know what I mean? I was doing dumb shit. And I was like 18 years old, <laughs> fresh out of high school. No, I mean, I had no clear vision of what I wanted to do or how to do it. And then my parents were like, just talk to a recruiter. Do, so- do something. So I was like, all right. And so... Get old Kogamu, Indiana. Go to the Joint Recruiting Center. Yeah, one of those like multi. Yeah, and so places, yeah. yeah, yeah, and so like everybody else who joins the military, I wanted to join the Air Force, <laughs> and the Air Force recruiter just isn't there. As someone who just came off a three year recruiting stint, oh, we'll get there, but yeah, uh, yeah but no, I'm just saying, like even now in my 14 years of service, where the fuck are Air Force recruiters? They're just not. I don't think they exist, brother. If you don't know, I don't think anybody does. <laughs> I, I was like, I went, I went there once. Because I was actually, at the time, working at the Dollar Tree down the street. So yeah. I was like, at lunch, I went over there, and the uh, Air Force guy was in there. I was like, well, I tried. You know what I mean? I can't do it. I tried. Um, went back the next day. Still wasn't there. And then I was like, I might as well talk to some of these other branches. Went to the Army office. And again, I'm not going to disparage any other branch. I'm not one of those, like, Navy's the best. I don't care. Um, but <laughs> I went to the Army office. And I'm I'm a very first impressions are kind of a big deal, especially when I was, you know, a teenager. Yeah. Very impressionable. <laughs> And I walked in the army office. They had those, sh- you know, those older fucking digi camis that look like shit. Yeah, the lime ones. Yeah, like they, they look terrible. And the guy was just, just fat as hell, big comb over, yeah. like you know what I mean. And he's just like, "Hey, what's up, man?" And I'm like, "No, <laughs> like I don't know what you all do here, but it stinks in this office." You know what I mean? Like I, yeah. I and, and again, I love the army. I've served with them a bunch of times. They're great at what they do. But as a kid looking for a job, I was like, "No." So. 
and I, I walked out of that office, didn't even grab a pamphlet, nothing. And so I was walking down the hall, and then the Marine recruiter came out. He's about 5'5", five, five, but he talked like he's about seven foot. He just he came out in his alphas. He's like, hey there, buddy, what are you, what are you doing here? And I was just like, oh, he like like cornering me. And yeah. I was just like, it's like, oh, you know, I'm just kind of looking around. He's like, oh, who are you looking at? And I was like, uh, Air Force. And he's like, oh, Air Force, uh, what do you want? You want to work on planes? And I was like, I, I, yeah, maybe, I guess. And he was like, well, you know, the, the Marine Corps actually leads the, uh, blah, 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 and gave me the whole fucking thing. And I was just we like, we have two planes. And yeah. I was like, brother, I am way too young. <laughs> so yeah. I, you are coming on way too strong. Can you please back off? And he was, I mean, he was just like, where are you going, buddy? He was like yeah. playing good defense. He's like, <laughs> and so I was like, I'm, I'm good. And literally, it turned out that the Navy recruiter wasn't super aggressive. He looked decent in uniform, you know yeah. what I mean? And I just poked my head in because it was the last office out the door. And um, he's like, hey. And I was like, hey. I'm just a, a goofy stoner kid standing in his doorway. And I, and I was like, what's up? And he's like, can I help you? <laughs> and I was like, I don't know, maybe. And he's like, are you thinking about the Navy? And I was like, I don't know. And he's like, okay, well, let me know. Like, he was even, like, sarcastic, which I kind of liked, you know what I mean? And yeah. So that's kind of how I got into the Navy. And, uh, hey, there's me. And so I... Um, is that in day one you're like, and that's when I'll stop <laughs> listening to uniform regulations. Well, that was coming off. You know what I love about that was coming that that was from the command, so we didn't have haircut. The command, yes, yeah, yeah. the and very special command. We will touch on yes, that. Yes, yeah. And you know, dude, you've got a fucking stack <laughs> on you. I bet it's every grown, yeah. dude, everyone in recruiting must fucking despise the ground. You you're, know what's you funny? If on. we're gonna talk about the recruit, just real quick, I just checked out the other day of recruiting. I'm done yeah. on recruiting tour. And literally one of the other recruiters was just in headquarters. He's like, man, he's like, honestly, the only reason I update my ribbons is because you fucking embarrassed me when you walked around here. Yeah. And I was like, I, I'm glad you're telling me this now for the first time in three years. But yeah. it, it kind of made me happy. He's like, I didn't care about ribbons or anything. But he's like, anytime you fucking walked in with those ribbons on, I was like, fuck, that looks awesome. Yeah. Like, So I was like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah. I'm glad I can inspire somebody who's also in the military. Well, they, sh they should. Yeah, but also at the same time, in that same office was a dude who had three ribbons. He was an E5 in the Navy, just looked like crap. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And he wore them upside down one day because who cares, right? I care. E exactly. And I'm not a huge buff on uniform. I'm not that guy. I never will be that yeah, guy. Yeah, look at that. Look at that hair on him. <laughs> but I was like, hey, bro, your ribbons are upside down. He goes, oh, is it bugging you? And I was like, it just flip them over. <laughs> like, I understand, like, you were late, run late in the mirror, put them, what, yeah. you only got three, fine. Actually, it is, and it's RP1 since yeah, right. well, that's, well, that was <laughs> yeah. the thing. I was yeah. just like, he just does not give up. And yeah. this man's supposed to be representing the brand, you know what I mean? You're supposed to be selling the product. Anyway, I don't want to go into the recruiting game. We'll touch on it, but... We'll touch, we'll yeah. touch on no, it. No, but I just... But that's how you got in. You're just Yeah, like, I, was, I, I was just like, I might as well. You know, had the dad come down, he talked, and he didn't speak Navy, so he was like, I was signing yeah. him up, and so... He's like, I don't care. So I when, he yeah. can leave tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I scored decent on the ASVAB and everything. I had I didn't know anything about like special warfare. You know, what I, mean? I didn't know. What, I just didn't know. Really Were you the open? Navy. No. Okay. Um, so what happened was I went down, did decent on the ASVAB. You know, good medical stuff. Uh, my eyesight wasn't great, but it was you know correctable. And so I was like, <clears> he's like, here's all the things, and he's just like, you can be on this ship, this ship. Like he gave me a lot of nautical ranks, which is, makes sense for the Navy. Yeah. And I was like, well. I'm aware that there are two wars going on right now. So um, yeah. what can I do for those? And he's like, huh, okay. He goes, well, I got two things for it. He's like, you have, you have a Navy corpsman? And I was like, what's that? He's like, it's like a nurse. And I was like, my Oof. mom's a nurse. And that's, the, again, this is me hearing this for the first time. He's like, I was like, my mom's a nurse. She doesn't seem to be happy a lot. <laughs> so yeah. um, She's in the ER. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, yeah. that's, again, I just yeah. hear nurse. I think of my mom, you know? Yeah. And so I was like, mm, I, I'm good. And he goes, and there's this thing. Here's RP. It's like, what's that? And literally, he goes, oh, you'll, he took out his finger guns, he goes, you'll be out there. And I was like, <laughs> okay. I was like, I I'll take that, I guess. And then he's like, all right, cool, cool. So did all my paperwork, called my recruiter back, and I was like, he's like, hey, how'd it go, man? I was like, I struck RP. He's like, nice, bro. You'll really like that. And I go, just a quick question. What is it? And he goes, I really don't know. <laughs> <laughs> because... Who the fuck does? You know what I mean? It's such a weird, isolated, it's the smallest rate in the Navy. There's more active duty SEALs at any time there are RPs. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's incredibly small. <clears throat> and so um, I just was told that you have a chance to go with the Marines and you'll serve in combat with the Marines. I didn't know anything about, like, the chaplain side of it. I just knew I would be, like, with a fighting force as part of the Navy. And I was like, okay, I'll take that. Cool. Well, and before we take a break, quickly tell 
like as succinctly as you can, uh, like what exactly an RP is and what role So it plays. Uh, essentially an RP is you have chaplains in the military and they're kind of like priests or, you know, therapists, like spiritual therapists and they're officers and they hold absolute confidentiality. And so if you're stressed or you need religious guidance or something, it's somebody on the staff who can help you, right? Um, an RP is pretty much like their enlisted advisor, right? So you um, handle the day-to-day -day operations of a chaplain and RP, but on the combative side, you are more of their rifleman because chaplains, per the Geneva Convention, cannot touch or carry a weapon, even in the most hostile of areas. So pretty much my time uh, with the Fleet Marine Force was I was just the chaplain's bodyguard and all that that entailed. Yeah. Yeah. It's a very, very specific role. Yeah. Yeah. Because you're always like at the battalion or regimental level. Yeah. But right? it, but if you were like me when you were young, um, you kind of got to dip your toe into Marine Corps culture. Yeah. And I was just like, I want to do all the things. And mm -hmm. so the reason I was so good at FMF is because I did all the things. Yeah. Like I was, uh, I was on all the crew serve weapons. I was a martial arts instructor. I was a small arms instructor. Like anything you needed, because the RP day to day, really not a lot to do, to be perfectly honest, especially if you're like a young third class, right? You just sit there and he's like, hey, can you type something? Sure. But then what do you do with the rest of the, the, rest of the fucking day, right? You go out and you fucking you get shit done. And, and that's also a good way to integrate yourself in the battalion as far as like, hey, Chaplin's are a little weird usually, but hey, RP is cool. We'll talk to him. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, that was pretty much it. I was just a jack of all trades. Well, as someone who had to talk to a chaplain a lot when, yeah. when they found out uh, – Christy was pregnant with our first daughter. Mm -hmm. Like, it's the weirdness is that they're like grown men. Yes. And, yeah. and, and officers, yeah. and you've like never met them. And everything inside of you is like, don't trust them. Yes. Yeah. Because, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. like, they're, they're like, uh, they're very well intentioned, but you have no idea, like, what, what will happen or how, yeah. you know, um, open you can be. And then I was just like, yeah, she, she's pregnant. And he's like, how's that make you feel? Yeah. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't know, sir. I just felt like the RP, oh, right? Was, exactly. RP was behind me, like, tell him how you feel. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I think, I think what I was good at was actually getting, again, getting ingrained with the battalion, as seeing as like a competent, you know, at the time, rifleman or anything they needed me to be, but also somebody who's like, if I can tell if somebody's being down or something, I'd be like, hey, maybe talk to chaps, and yeah. they'd be like, okay, as long as I can build that bridge between them, that's all I can do. Perfect. Yeah. And we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll talk about your time building bridges in the Marine Corps and life for Mike Sensi. <laughs> we'll be right back. Hey, if you're liking this episode, and you should be liking it, look at Mike's liking it. Glasses aren't coming off. The glasses won't come off, but the likes, the comments, and the subscriptions, they should come on. Go ahead and do that right now. And if you want to drop a nice little rating and review anywhere you're listening to this, Spotify, Apple Podcast, or whatever other podcast platform there is, it will not go unnoticed. Thank you very much. Let's get back to the show. And we're back with the Bible man himself. Oh, Jesus. RP1 Sensi. Yeah. Mike why, Sensi. Why do you keep doing it? Just say Mike. You okay. To, yeah. okay, sure, sure. Yeah. RP1 Mike Sensi. <laughs> Mike Sensi official everywhere. No, we're here back with Mike Sensi. Yeah. Um, you know, the sword of the Lord. Right. The, the old sword of the Lord. The yeah. sword of the Lord. Yeah. The protector of the non combatants. Mm -hmm. Him. Him. He now, is. I don't feel like we need to cover boot camp stories with no, you. Do you have no. any? No, I mean, do you have I, any like weird moments? Anything that sticks out? Not really. I think at boot camp, because when I hear like Marine Corps boot camp stories, a lot of y'all talk about like it was that was the moment I realized this shit was crazy. You know what I mean? You get that coming to yeah. like that what, Black Friday, y'all call it or whatever. Um, the Crucible? Not no no no. When you first get there, you meet your DIs and oh, just receiving whatever it is. But uh, so I hear sorry, I had war that was a yeah, little yeah, yeah, more yeah. complicated. But no, but I hear a lot of Marines talk about like yeah, yeah. It, like that it, like, it hit him like holy shit, this is real. Yeah. Um, I didn't have that as Navy boot camp. It's really quite simple. Um, I did notice though at the time, again, it's Navy boot camp. It really is not that hard. Like I, I told people in recruiting all the time, they're like, what, what's the advice to survive Navy boot camp? Just do what you're told. That's the entire, that's the entire program. So that's, just do what you're told. My hack was my cousin who was older than me by four right. years, literally enlisted four years before I did. Yeah. He's like, it's all a game. Yeah, just yeah. keep your head down. Yeah. Don't do anything stupid. So like I went in there kind of like with my eyes behind the curtain yeah, yeah, and I was That's I was good. genuinely surprised by how many people like believed everything they were being told. All right. Well, there's that, right? <clears throat> and then the other side of it was how many people fucking just this isn't for me. Just quit. There were two dudes that tried to swim away. Yeah, no, yeah, they like I'm saying, slept like, Paris Island, tried to swim because it literally crazy. is an yeah. island. So we had one dude in our squad bay that we were 
doing some kind of uniform thing. So, you know, you're staying at attention for like an hour, yeah. standing there. And uh, the RDCs, our Navy DIs, like walked up. He was like talking to them. There's like all three around them. They walked, left the compartment. They're all standing there at attention still. He comes back and he just like uh, opens his, his bunk and he starts putting stuff in the sea bag and they fucking just gone. So apparently, and wow. the, the RDCs never really talked about it. They were just like, uh, he decided this wasn't for him. Let's fucking carry on. You know what I mean? Like, but it's just like, what did you think this was? How did, How did he get to leave? But I, who fucking knows? Who fucking knows? Oh. I yeah. mean, even Cat Williams became a Marine. <laughs> Do you want to talk so, about that? <laughs> There's a clip. We're going to investigate whether or not Cat Williams was a Marine, but he was on Mark Marin's podcast mm-hmm. talking about how he was in boot camp and uh, graduated. graduated. Yeah. And then they found out he was underage, so they separated him. We will let the internet decide and hopefully send me all but of this stuff on what other celebrity MLL. ambassador would you like for the Marine Corps other than the Cat Williams? He's pimping. If I could pick He's one pimping, guy. Pimping. Dude, if I could pick, I, honestly, honestly, Adam Driver has come correct in like Oh, if every, we're talking real? Oh, yeah. In every single oh, yeah. capacity as a Marine, a yeah. guy who like literally. He's a Hoosier, He's a Hoosier by the way. Is he Mich- really? Mishawaka, Indiana. Yeah. yeah. Shout out Mishawaka, Indiana. <laughs> don't, for, pull, don't pull that up. Yeah. Shout out Mishawaka, Indiana. <laughs> I don't even know where that is. Uh, he made that up. Yeah. Um, I don't know. But. <laughs> Like, yeah, there's, <laughs> there's Adam Driver. Here's, here's what Ooh, I love about those ears, man. Here's what I love about him. Somebody with big ears, I empathize. Well, he's he's definitely he's he was definitely a mortarman, and then he cracked his sternum. Yeah, his story is bizarre. Yeah, which honestly, there there's always one there was always one guy who who got messed up bad on a training accident. Yeah, um, one guy busted his shoulder. Other dude broke his arm, or his, uh, I think it was his arm. Doesn't matter. Each workup, there's a guy who gets like hurt like that. So that's how I knew the story was actually true because they're like, yeah, he cracked his sternum. You can't fake that. It's right, not like yeah, a, yeah. I was scared. Like, yeah, everyone was scared. No, he doesn't seem like a type at all. Like it, it affects him that he never got to yes. like deploy and stuff. No, but like his acting's incredible. Like yeah. the, the things he's doing. Like he was Kylo Ren. He's Han Solo's son. Like mm-hmm. I, I couldn't pick a better guy. No, I agree. Couldn't if we're talking serious guy. ambassadors, yeah, no, that that's good. I think what? Rihanna for the Navy. <laughs> Do you think Rihanna for the Navy? Yeah, or the best one. Yeah, she was in Battleship. Battleship. <laughs> Battleship doesn't get its flowers, does no, it? No, I'll redo. Uh, no, um, I don't think I've actually seen the whole movie. I I have. It was a flight situation. I feel like okay, like I was on an airplane and you know. Oh oh oh! I see what you're saying. Yeah, that's it was, how it, it does. A, it, I remember I was traveling. I don't know. The junk, a junk food movie. Like yeah, you just yeah. and even I was just like, oh. <laughs> like there's like the guy who's um, climbing up the mountain with like his therapist and he's involved in oh, helping. Oh, the the amputee. The amputee. Yeah, I, I remember can't remember part. his name. Yeah, I remember that part. And then, like, there was just too many things. It yeah. was like a riding room where they're like, yeah, let's do that. <laughs> um, it, was, it was all right. But <laughs> okay, fair enough. It's, it's ex- <sighs> I kind of wish they didn't make it the way they did. Oh, sure. Honest. Okay. Not enough uh, battleship scenes for you? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe more Rihanna. May- I, I, you can never yeah. go wrong with more Rihanna. Yeah. If I'm in a riders room, they're like, more Rihanna. I'm like, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they get under their, her umbrella, Ella. <laughs> I did see a clip recently where she got paid like six million to be at like some prince's birthday, a wedding in Saudi Arabia. Oh, really? People are like, "Oh, can you believe that?" And I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, that, I makes, that makes a ton of sense. She's yeah. on that level, yeah." Yeah, I can believe that she sang like five songs and got six oh, million. I bet, I cash. bet that's an appearance fee. I bet she didn't even sing. I bet she made no, a she's speech. Per- she's performing, oh, she's and performing? it just pans okay. out. They're like, "Look at her," and I'm like, "Yeah." Well, would you sing for twenty minutes for six million? Yeah, yeah. Real cash. She literally has a song that says, "Bitch, better have my money." Like. That's a paid woman right there. Yeah. Shout out Rihanna. I hope she does well. <laughs> hope she. Uh, yeah. I hope she does. I hope she does well. I hope, hope she uh, finally that uniform looked good on her. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know? Speaking of the uniform, I was talking to some guys about this recently on the Unsub podcast, but I remember them telling me when the blue digital cami came out. It's not true. It doesn't change color. I know. <laughs> I know now. <laughs> but why would they make an ocean blue uniform? Now I'm 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 just a simple marine, Mike. Right, right, right. I'll make <laughs> when they're primarily in the ocean. I will. I'll, I'll do this for you. I'll, we I'll, do for someone. Man, oh, I'll give you a good wow. FMF story about that. He's gone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's gone, dude. <laughs> like, it's a good idea in principle. If it hits salt water, orange, that makes sense. That technology should exist, I, right? I'm sure it does. Yeah, I'll I'll give you a good uh, fleet Look marine that. force That's story. Ocean. I know, I know. That's ocean. Yeah, yeah. Um, so there was a corpsman in Afghanistan. Uh, the Master Chief Petty Officer of the Navy had come through. Okay. And uh, it was kind of, hey, all sailors here deployed. Hey. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, hey, bring you know, it. Kind of a town hall with the, the Mick Pond, right? And this was the time that these were, I mean, they had just got issued, but they were like 
few years in. And so all these kind of like things like, why do these exist, right? Yeah. And so this Corman stands up. He's like an HM3. And he goes, I wasn't here. This is a secondhand story. But he goes, he goes, Mick Pond, he's like, I just got to ask. He's like, now, granted, we're in Marpats here. You know, we're in desert camis and stuff. He goes, why is the fucking Navy uniform blue? It looks so stupid. And the Mick Pond was like, I signed off on that uniform. <laughs> it was my signature that made that happen. He goes, oh, okay. <laughs> Good to go. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So he literally had the balls to be like, this uniform sucks. We're literally getting made fun of. Mick Pond goes, it's kind of my idea. <laughs> he goes, oh, okay. Was he not familiar with the ocean? Right. No, you would think and it's if, blue tones. If you if you become the master chief petty officer of the navy, mm-hmm. one would assume. Again, I don't know. I'm not the Mick Fun, not yet. And one would assume that you are familiar with the ocean. Yeah, a little bit. The idea of it turning orange makes sense. It to does me. make sense, which is why it's such a good rumor. But it's just not true. That's worse. I know. What do you want from? I didn't design the fucking thing. I would Mick like. Fon, I would like did? somebody to think about. <laughs> wow. That matches. <laughs> like, <laughs> like that's the whole point of the camouflage, is to blend in. Yeah. So it seems like their end goal is to make sailors blend in. Mm-hmm. What is it now? Is it still blue? What do people wear on ships? No, uh, we have the uh, the guacamoles now. What's the guacamoles? So it's kind of like the greenish ones. Uh, oh, yeah. The yep. one that kind of looks like the Marine Corps one? Yeah, kind of. I'm all yeah. right with that. And that is the wear. But we also have, like... Um, some coveralls if you're on a ship and you're actually like getting dirty working on the ship. If you have a job, yeah. Yeah, if you have an actual job. Um, then there's like some special coveralls that just came out not too, too long ago. I don't know. I've never worn them. I don't have a real job, so. Yeah, that's not going to change. <laughs> but where was your, so you go through um, boot camp and yep. then you hit your A school. Mm-hmm. Was in, How long it was, was that? It was, it was actually on Fort Jackson, South Carolina. In South Carolina. It was on Army Base. Uh, probably problematic that you use that name. It's and, probably got a new name now. Oh, who knows? Yeah, yeah. And so for all the soldiers listening, I will say this. I didn't know Fort Jackson was also kind of like a boot camp area. And so there were like people going through their initial training there as well. And we had just graduated boot camps. We're super salty. But no, we were like, we're in student status, obviously. Like we're brand new. So, and we're at the chow hall eating the wet. Army has the wettest food. I don't know why Army's chow hall, everything's fucking wait, what wet. Do you mean? It's no, it's fit, it's liquidy. Everything's wet. That's, you had like wet rolls? It was anything that you touched became damp. I don't know. I think it's a South Carolina humidity thing. But it's, <laughs> I, I just remember, accepted it. I remember coming from, because the Navy uh, boot camp, food was actually pretty fucking it was not bad at all and you go there and you're like everything's wet <laughs> everything's gray and wet anyway why can it all be eaten <laughs> with a spoon yeah yeah exactly yeah so we're at the chow hall and um there's these like soldiers coming through and they got their camelbacks on and shit and they're like oh look at these fucking squids fuck it wearing our little blue fucking camis and stuff and we're like hey guys and look at that wet food <laughs> everything's, wow. wet. everything's wet i don't know why hang on real quick why Blas. is the army's food all wet Blas, enhance <laughs> enhance enhance wetness <laughs> you know what's interesting it really all can be eaten with a spoon. Now yes, that I look I at it, I am not even kidding. There's something about, and I've been to. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I've been hang, to on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Here's what I love about the military. Yeah, we're so dumb as a culture. They're like army chow hole lines use color coding to promote health <laughs> because we need them to explain what carbs and protein yeah. well, and starches and, and, are. I mean, that's true. You got to build from the ground up. Look how wet it looks. It does look wet. Why is it so wet? I don't. I have no idea. Looks like a calamari festival down there. <laughs> but every anytime I go to an army school on an army base and I eat at an army chow hall, I'm just like, this food is wet. Why is it so wet? Big army, you have 40 minutes to respond. <laughs> big army, you're on the clock. <laughs> you're on the clock, big army. Everything's wet. Um, but anyway, so we're in this chow hall eating this wet food and yeah. um, <laughs> eating our dog food. And uh, that's what these, it sounds like. These, yeah, these yes. soldiers are, again. They're in their camelbacks. They're coming through like these fucking squids, pussies, blah blah. I'm like, hey, how, nice to meet you, whatever. Yeah. And, my name's Mike. And then literally their fucking drill sergeants would be like, hey, fuck, don't talk to him, blah, blah. They were still in boot camps. They were in boot camp talking shit to us. Could no. you have ever? No. Could you have ever? I never saw anyone, but I could have never. Well, I of course. Especially yeah. when people weren't making it. Well, right. That's what I'm saying. Like, it's bizarre that they had the confidence and the arrogance to look at people who in another branch who they don't know. They don't know what we're doing. Wearing fucking go fasters yeah, and exa- shit. Yeah. yeah, and they're in camelbacks eating their wet food. Like, oh, look at these pussy squids. And <sighs> Dude, if we could find them right now. <laughs> oh, they're all, I'm sure they're all senators yeah. or whatever. Army chow hall <laughs> image 17 of 18. <laughs> Dude, Blas is the best. I know. Look <laughs> at like these wet soldiers. Yeah. <laughs> Blas is the best. But yeah, I just thought it was so funny. So I will say this. That <laughs> what did you say? That's yeah. a meme right there for sure. Um, 
I will say this. When I go up to Fort Campbell, uh, Fifth Group's got a chow hall. It's called, it's literally called the Oasis. Yeah. <laughs> I get it. No wonder everyone likes those green berets when they're not committing war crimes. Is it wet? So, no, it's not wet. It was, they it's had, a, they had it. <laughs> they had an orange juice machine. That's it. That's exactly right. Yeah, yeah. Um, that poor girl is just a wet plate of food. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, she's gonna kill me. Um, no, they had an orange juice machine, and it freshly. So it the orange came out. It sliced and juiced itself. They had that at airborne school. Yeah. And I was just like, man, the army's got this much fuck you money. Yeah. Marines would like punch it. Yeah, like, yeah. Overall, have sex with it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah if 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 we're lucky. If we're lucky, they would only try to have sex with it. Most yeah. likely, they would break it. Yeah, exactly. It would turn into Dune 2 buckets all over the place. <laughs> the <laughs> just fucking buckets. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, A-School is at Fort Jackson. Yeah, yeah. Fort Jackson, <laughs> problematic name yeah. by Mike. Um, uh, so it's a few months long. You learn about administration stuff. And so this is also kind of where the RP rating is unique because we serve on all the platforms. Yep. And so once you're there, you're kind of judged how you're doing your schoolwork and your PT tests and stuff. If you're kind of t- top of the class, or not a lot of us anyway, but if you're doing okay, then you can be like, hey, do you want to go with the Marines? Do you want to go? You know what I mean? So they kind of give you if yeah. you want. And so all I knew was, like, I was told, Marines, I want to go Marines. And so Obviously. The, yeah, the second class was like, all right, I'll, I'll put you with the Marines. I'm like, bet. I didn't know about logistics and infantry and ACE. I didn't know about all that, right? I just knew Marines. I literally only know half the words you just said. Exactly. Yeah. And so I get selected as Marines, right? Hell and yeah. so then I go through a course that at the time called Crest, <laughs> since been uh, renamed to McKest. But the Crest course was like the combat uh, RP expeditionary skills training. So your basic combat training for RP serving with expeditionary or Marines, right? Yep. You learn how to wear the Marine Corps uniform. It's kind of like a crash course and all that. You do a lot of combat trauma stuff with the corpsman. That's cool. And uh, yeah, yeah, no, you. It's it's it really is a crash course and like the most basic things. That's good. And like, we um, say like an MCT comparison. Very much so. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so go through that, and then I uh, went to Camp Geiger uh, for O three eleven course. Yeah. So Hell I went, yeah, I went to I, I went to ITB and I hold the O three eleven MOS. You know what's so funny about going through that is, I was like one of the last ones to do it, and then a couple more people after me did it. As, yeah. Like experimental, but. I was told that's like that was the course of the old school RP is because you'd come in, you can learn the Marine Corps verbiage, but until you go through a Marine Corps school, you're not gonna you're not gonna understand what the fuck's going on. Yeah. So I went through there and they're like, oh, we got another RP. Okay, cool. And the instructors did not mess with me. No, they didn't care. They were just like, just fucking just learn. And I I learned a ton. So yeah. I think it was it was very beneficial in order to speak the the language of the Marine. You know what I mean? Hell yeah. So um and then after I got all that uh, rah rah sis boom ba. Uh, then I got put with um, second Marine Logistics Group <laughs> for my very first. I was a young E two. No, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. And so again, I didn't know the difference of anything. You know, I was just there. It'd be funny if you like out of the way pogues. You just like <laughs> yeah, pushed yeah. him in the wall because he just got done with you know ITB. Yeah, exactly. Like, so, bah, but it, 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 that was kind yeah. of funny because I come to that it was so obviously infantry like uh, mindset that I was like, okay. When we patrolling, when we when You're we digging, dipping. fighting, yeah. Yeah, yeah, when we fighting, digging, like uh, fighting holes and stuff, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I get there and they're like, uh, so RP, you're in here. I'm like, cool. And they're like, oh, we have engineer companies. We don't have rifle platoons or anything. Yeah. I'm like, okay. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like it was just, it was such a different kind of culture shock. But uh, yeah, I went to the logistics group for my first tour. That was fun. It was, it was your first honestly, tour. Honestly, it was fantastic because it was very much. I was so young and dumb and also gung ho that I was just like, I want to do all the things. I didn't really, as a young RP, didn't really have a job, you know what I mean? I'd yeah. take care of the job and stuff, but they're like, any deployments or trainings you want to do? Like, I was just, I kind of, the world was my oyster. I was that's a young kid. Yeah, it was fantastic. It really was. So that's when I got uh, I got to do a Mew. Got that out of the way, 11 and a half month Mew was my first deployment. And then I pushed with the 13 Tac one movement into Afghanistan for my second deployment. And that's where I saw the majority of my combat action, oddly enough, because... I was CLR2 forward, logistics regiment forward, but at the same time, um, I had all those quals I talked about. You know, I was I was a trained rifleman. Yeah. And so anytime we'd go out and they're like, hey, uh, RP, they just want another rifle on a contact patrol. That, the thing they'd done so many fucking times, we'd go to an outstation. It was RCT7 at the time. I think we'd go out there. I think that's where I was. Uh, oh, uh, maybe. Yeah. Did we maybe. cross paths? No. <laughs> no, we didn't. But... Uh, so they would just ne- kind of know of me. I'd show up, you know, I had my little black belt with a tab on it. and Because uh, you be picked ready. up Marine, uh, you did McMap, right? Yeah, yeah. So I was a McMap instructor. I was, yeah. Again, I was just like, anytime I go to an outstation where the grunts were and stuff, they were like, oh, there's that art. Fuck yeah, do it. Yeah, they just, yeah. 
they liked having somebody who was different because they, as you know, you do it so many fucking times. You're like, can we switch this up? Like, holy fuck. Yeah, and the biggest problem you have with attachments in general is, um, in my experience, was they were either overconfident or not mm. confident enough. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? There's a lot of like, I know what we're doing. You're like, yeah. If you're wrong, you're gonna die. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I'll be fine. Yes. Yeah. But if you start wandering off, it'll it also increases the chances that everyone else will die. Yeah, but also some of it at first when I first got there, before I got okay with some of the outposts, was uh, it was just some young you know fucking barrel chested corporal like <laughs> RP. You want to do contact? It was like kind of like a hey fuck you pussy, and I was cool. like yeah I do, <laughs> yeah. and there he was like huh okay all right well we're gonna have a meeting about five minutes and, like it was kind of like a fuck you yeah. like and i was like i'll be there <laughs> yeah. you know what i mean so sounds good yeah exactly yeah, yeah. yeah. so and he was like oh fuck he showed up <laughs> yeah yeah so no it was it was good man i i think that tour was uh was really good because it was kind of i got to uh employ a lot of the basic you know combat skills and stuff that i and i also not a lot of rps actually get to go down range and do stuff so yeah but i was like manifesting it the day plan. i was like where's the enemy and how do i eliminate them huh. i was all fucking about it. you know what i mean it's um yeah everywhere yeah <laughs> they just pull up a map and they go here yeah <laughs> The enemy is here. If you just look here, yeah. this is us. Yeah. And that's where they are. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, it was good, man. I So, I was, you know, two deployments deep, fucking only three years in. And I yeah. uh, had my combat action done. And, like, I was just, I was on top of the world. So then, Brother. So, then after that, I was, like, I was actually leaving that uh, that deployment. And I was like, I fucking like this desert life. Like, this is this feels right. There's nothing better. Uh, yeah, yeah. Let me, let me for a second. Yeah, Deployed right. life. Yeah. When you train for it and you you get that level of fulfillment, yeah, I remember thinking to myself, if someone's like Zach, you got to stay here for like an, another seven months. I was yeah. like, I can do that. Yeah, yeah. Like you mean be fulfilled as a person? Yeah. Like this is what I'm here to do. This is what the Lord cut me out <laughs> of stone for. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Like because you're doing and you're and especially towards the end, bro. It's humming. Yeah. Oh it's yeah. It's humming yeah. towards the end. Yeah. You're like, what's up, Muhammad? 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 Yeah, whatever yeah. the elder's name is, Absolutely. and then you're like, hey, what's going on? You, you know. Or Talib, whoa, oh, Talib, yes, you know, and, like, that's it, dude, it's, yeah. but, like, you're so finely tuned, I remember, like, running night patrols without, you know, optics, Harley, because yeah. the loom is so good, yeah, yeah, yeah. you're, like, aware of the cultures, and it just, you, I was, then leaving, it's just, like, kind of a bummer, because you're, like, oh, I gotta go back to the, I remember thinking, like, coming back home was, like, the fake world. Yeah, no, I was, Does that make I, sense? I was just thinking about this when I landed here in Nashville, right? Yeah. I can't remember what book, I, a billion years ago, I read it about a soldier coming home it was he was a eod soldier he wrote a book about coming home and how, how just you touch foot on american soil you're grateful to be home first thing you see in the airport or, or wherever you land is mm -hmm. like people not knowing there's a war going on yes in such a yes, displaced it's just, it's just. filming you know what i mean like you you walk around you're like hey why is why is everybody walking what what there's a war there's yeah. a war and they're just like and then he talked about like the overwhelming yeah. Uh, colors of like the gummy bears and the candy, everything's so bright and flashy and just like that. That is true. Yeah, um, that was my first thought. I was just like, I, I land there, I'd seen all this stuff, I did all this stuff, and I get back and I'm just like, everybody's just carrying on like business yeah. is normal. I was like, what? What was the last eight months? Like, did you breeze through Kyrgyzstan on your way? Back? Uh, no, 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 you, no. none of the times. No, that was actually good. We went through Kyrgyzstan each time to to enter and leave Afghanistan, mm -hmm. that big Air Force base that's yeah. there. Oh, maybe we did. I it's, think I think we You did. land in the middle of yeah, nowhere. Yeah, yeah. You, you ride a bus, yeah. and you pass, like, a huge Soviet sickle and hammer. Because, yeah, that does something. Because there. buildings yeah. just stopped. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then it was this huge Air Force place. Yeah, I remember all the Air Force people, yeah. And they put us in, like, a hideaway. And I just remember thinking, like these, big tent. Yeah, right. these fucking, they call this war? This right, isn't war. Right, right, right. And that did help slow it down, but I remember... Landed in Bangor, Maine, one time, the second time, and greeted by all the people there. They were yeah, so cool. Yeah. But even still, I was just like, wow, life really does go on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember we got back. Kind of my first, uh, you know, dabble in PTSD, if you will, uh, was I got back from the other RPs on Campbell June. They're like, hey, we're going to take you out to, uh, what's that? Play? It's like Hooters, the knockoff. Um, uh, Tilted Kilt? No. The, uh, Twin Peaks. Twin Peaks. Yeah, there was one in Jacksonville. And they're like, hey, let's go fucking get fucked up. You know what I mean? Twin Peaks. I, be I bet it prints money, brother. Oh, oh I can't even imagine. <laughs> it's like so, but we, I was like, yeah, of course. You know what I mean? So I remember we all got in the car. We're all excited to see each other. I'm home. And 
uh, we, we got there, and everything is so loud and bright, and oh. nobody gives a fuck of the yeah. war that I just came, you know what I mean? Not that yeah. I asked them to care. Yeah, like, well, it's just, it's. And, and I, that was my first time with a super, like, I was like, hey, boy, I was, no, I was just like, boys, I, I need, I gotta go. Yeah. And, were, and, and then again, they didn't understand, and they, they were just like, oh, you all right? And I was like, I, I just can't, I can't be in here. Like, it does not feel right. So. Um, Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, honestly. yeah. And so I, I want, I'll share my first time with sure. It sure. was, uh, it was in the parking lot of the Wilmington Mall with yeah. Christy and our firstborn child, and yeah, you know, we just want to go to the mall. You're not going to the Jacksonville Mall. <laughs> we were going to do a day of it. You don't but, like crackheads? <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm old fashioned. <laughs> I'm old fashioned. Um, and you know, the Wilmington Mall, like just that hour difference, you're like, whoa, this is, you know, the beaches and all that stuff. And so I was like, let's just go there and like, I don't know. We got in the parking lot and I just started having like this like full blown panic attack. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's, I was so like, uh, it's so random. Not random, but it's yeah. It's uh, and like just seeing that many people in one spot, I was like, I'll be fine. I'll be fine. I just yeah. like sat in the car for a little bit. But yeah. the first brush with it's just like. Oh yeah, this is too much. And I had been in Afghanistan like twelve days prior. Right, right, exactly. Yeah, it like, turns so quickly. Yeah, yeah. You're there, and then you're not there. Yeah, yeah. and then you're like, oh, you want to go to Pax Sun? You're like, oh, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. I guess. I guess I can. Please let me learn. Yeah, yeah. yeah, please. Yeah. In your case, hot topic. Right, exactly. Yeah. Sorry, oh, goddamn sorry. right. Yeah, you goddamn right. <laughs> so you're there with CLR. You're still bopping around units. Where do you go after that? Is that when you went to Hawaii? Yeah. So I go to Hawaii after that. So while I was leaving there, I like I was saying earlier, I was like the desert just feels right. Like this FMF life feels right. Like I'm crushing. It, I'm making rank. I'm Time to things. find a victor unit. And so yeah. And so I go to my detailer. I was like, what is the most deployed Marine Corps unit? And he was like, who is this? Like what the fuck? And he goes, well, Third Marines has a pretty high op tempo. I was like, send me Third Marines. So he does, and I check into 1st Battalion, 3rd Marines in Hawaii. And, um, man, that op tempo is very high. But <laughs> yeah. I was like, holy shit, we're in the field already? <laughs> like, yeah. I land, and they're like, here's your barracks, go to the field. Like, what the fuck? Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, it was, the op tempo was really high. So, yeah, I got my victory unit. But, unfortunately, we were supposed to rotate uh, to Afghanistan, but that didn't happen. What so, year? 2014. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, yeah, so we did some FDFs, for deployed forces or whatever, uh, whatever they're called, UDPs, unit deployments. And all that. So we essentially went to Japan and Korea a bunch of times for our deployments. Uh, and I, I got to say, though, I had, I think my most, like, some of my best friends come from that unit just mm. because it was such a weird holdover of truly, a lot of the senior guys had been there yeah, in Afghanistan or even Iraq, some of them, and... Uh, to be in a victory unit now where these young, hungry fucking war dogs are like, let's go, let's go, let's go. They're hearing all the war stories and they just get, hey, hard stop. No, we're doing Japan, Korea. So I don't understand that. It was tough. It was I didn't tough. Understand it was tough that. to be part of it. Yeah. I didn't understand that when I heard, I remember when I realized, like, so my first tour was to Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. We were supposed to go on a float with the 24th Mule. We went to Afghanistan. Right. And then the second time, they're like, hey, you're supposed to go to Iraq in the green zones. Right. Hell yeah. <laughs> Shut down a few bases, hold security. Hell yeah. Right. Wi-Fi, waits. Who cares? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we went to Marja. Marja, Marja, Marja. <laughs> but I remember being like, where's the rest of them? Yeah. Like the whole West yeah. Coast. Yeah. I yeah. know there was the big, they had done a lot of Iraq stuff and everything else, but there was still war happening. Yeah. And then I found out they're like, oh, that's not how it works. Someone decides, like, yeah. they they just don't go. Yeah. And I don't know what the qualifications Who were. Who knows? Who knows? But they're like, I remember third, they're like, leave out third too. And I was like, guys, we could, we could use some help. Yeah. No, it was, it was, it was really weird to be a part of it. Um, so I was like, I was considering one of the senior guys now. So I'm like an E5, I'm a second class, you know, um, in this victory unit. And a lot of the, you know, Fucking PFCs and Lance Cooley's never got to do it. They'd come to me all the time. RP, what's it like, bro? Like they they just wanted something. Yeah, because they had trained since their Marine Corps. I can't know? imagine that. I, it, it was crazy. Honestly, it was it was. That. I think that's why I have some of my best friends from that unit because, um, you know, from the from Alpha Company all the way to headquarters, everybody had that. There was that divide. There's the half that had been there and the half that will never go. I honestly can't imagine spending any time during spending any time in my enlistment, especially during that time. So what, 13, 14, is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah, 14, I got there. Yeah. Surge is still happening until 15 or 16. Yeah. I, again, the war was still going. It's still, no, it's, yeah. we're, the, yeah. Surge is aptly named. <laughs> it is aptly named the Surge. Yeah. But, like, I just can't imagine that yeah. in particular. Yeah. Especially as an infantryman, a combat, that's, mm -hmm. that is your goal. That is what, 
I mean, it kind of justifies all the fears I had in 2007 through 11 of being yeah. like, D- please, God, don't let me be a boot forever. Yeah, so that was... Please the, send me. Our biggest problem with uh, the mental health, besides just the strenuous you know, training and never getting to go, was the absolute imposter syndrome a lot of these kids felt. Yeah. Because they, it's all they wanted. They just wanted to get some. That's all they wanted. That's all they've trained about, all they've talked about, all their senior leaders have seen and done. They hear those war stories like, I want to be part of that. And they just know... Every single Japan and Korea push, go in the field and play war, you'll never go. That sucks. Yeah. I honestly can't imagine. Yeah, it was rough. How long were you there? Uh, three years there. And then I got an email. Because, um, honestly, I was kind of suffering from it, too. And I was like, well, the war's over. I don't want to be a regular RP. Such a funny sentence in yeah, 2014. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. As yeah. funny as it can be. Yeah, as funny yeah, as it can be, yeah. for sure. Um, and I was like, well, I kind of served, I kind of got, I got my nut, right? I'm, yeah. I'm good. Um, so I was like, I'm looking to get out. And then a chief I knew, he emails me on Facebook and he goes, hey man, he's like, have you ever heard of Dev Group? And I was like, no. And he goes, he goes, I think you'd be a good fit. And I was like, what is it? And so he goes, um, I think you'd be really good. It's a command you have to screen for, um, but I think you'd be a really good fit. He's like, are you staying in? And I was like, I was literally looking at get now, but I don't know. And so he goes, I just, I'm telling you right now, he's like, just come to screening and and then think about it. That's all okay. it took? Yeah. He literally just emailed you, said, hey, have you ever heard of Dev Group? Yeah, because at the time, I don't know if we're going to, but <laughs> at the time, um, the uh, chaplain's office in that unit had just been stood up because there was no organic thing. And so when uh, Extortion 17 happened, when that uh, aircraft went down with all those operators yeah. in it, it was such a hassle to do the next of kin notifications and the door knocks and stuff yeah. like that. Because what would happen is it was such a it was such a kind of a secret unit that chaplains and and you know local priests and stuff were getting read into the program and like while they're on the planes and notify the families. They Just go, not even military people. Yeah, it's some I, it's it's mainly military, but like some people have their own. Kind they're of, like, what this exists? Yeah. So exactly. And when you say read in, specifically explain what that means. So that's pretty. You are read into the program that you're going to be supporting. So literally, it's like a. This is what this is. This is what you're supporting. Someone's this is, literally reading it yes, to you. That's correct. Yeah. So um, so that's why they just stood up a chaplain's office that was organic to Dev Group, which they'd never had before. They never really had the reason. But after extortion, they're like, we need more help. How and many people, guys were lost on extortion? Oh, I don't remember. You'd have to Google that. I mean, double digits, yeah. It was double digits. Yeah. I remember it was the single largest loss yes. of life. Yeah, and especially in, in the special operations time. community. Yeah, yeah dude, it was, it was enormous. It was yeah, a nightmare. And so again, you're doing all those door knocks and next of kin, and uh, you're doing memorials and obviously and all that stuff. And that's when they noticed, they're like, yeah, we need a little bit more help. So they uh, they organized an organic chaplain's office to Dev Group, which they'd never had before. Mm. So that's why I got uh, kind of recruited into that. Wow. Because they're like, we need RPs with combat experience and also who can hold a top secret clearance and who can fucking keep up essentially <laughs> is what they were looking for. Wow. So, cause uh, I don't know what you know about that organization, but they, they don't like people who don't keep up. <laughs> I've heard. Yeah. 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 No, I've so, heard. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, I haven't been read in, but that's I've, right, I've yeah, been yeah. told. Yeah. You don't, you don't have to lead, but you got to keep up. No. And, um, Rightfully so. And uh, we're going to take a quick break. Hey, if you're liking this episode and you should be liking it, look at Mike's liking it. Glasses aren't coming off. The glasses won't come off, but the likes, the comments, and the subscriptions, they should come on. Go ahead and do that right now. And if you want to drop a nice little rating and review anywhere you're listening to this, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or whatever other podcast platform there is, it will not go unnoticed. Thank you very much. Let's get back to the show. And we're back. We're does the ba- clapping work? It does work. Okay. It helps It helps him and it helps Oh, it's me. for him. Oh, I guess that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. He's- That's right. <laughs> I don't like your... I'm sorry. Sorry we're not on your couch eating is it, Dave's is, hot is chicken. It, is, it the sh- is it the shades? I don't know. I like it. The whole I, I let the people cool. think we look like douchebags. Man, I feel cool. <laughs> I feel like I have just enough defensive mechanisms up to have this conversation. That's what I'm saying. I haven't looked at you. I've made eye contact this whole time. I've been looking down. No, it's been it's it's been great. It's been great. <laughs> Tina, um, Mike got hand tattoos. So, She's going to be so mad. Yeah. Ooh, bad news bears. You know it's not bad news bears? Dev group. Oh, there we go. So... I, it is obviously a top secret program, and uh, it's not time for me to help you co-write your book yet. Right. So, as I want you to talk kind of briefly about what you did mm, specifically I'm... there. Um. So that I don't like talking about it because I I tell you this all the time, right? Yeah, yeah. Like I, I respect that organization so much. Yeah. That I refuse to milk them for anything. You're the only one. Yeah, I, I'm aware of that. Yeah. Um, 
but I just <laughs> the only I one. I had such a genuinely good experience there for the most part. Yeah, that it's just like just seeing what these men and women do on a daily basis. Mm-hmm. What, who am I to fucking compromise their mission? I th- I think that drives me nuts. We can get into everybody who's wrote books and stuff now, but the, you know, also I don't want they're veterans. I'm still active duty. Yeah, so. I don't want to. I don't feel like going through that. And I know yeah, no, but I'll I'll, t- I'll tell you, it's a it's an organization that you have to screen for. Um, there's different pipelines for everybody, but uh, for me, it was essentially. Is this guy a good fit? Your your record speaks to for yourself. Like the physical fitness, they'll they'll get you in shape. They'll get you in special warfare shape once you're there. Once you're selected, that's no that's no worries. Um, but also you you don't get a foot in the door to screen there if your service record isn't good to go. You know what I mean? Yeah. They know who they got coming in. Yeah. So um, you were literally with the best of the best of the Navy, um, trying out for this position. And I, I think that kind of pushes a lot of people to do better because you go there and you're literally amongst all these different Navy ratings, everybody's decorated in their own right, everybody's successful, and they want these, there's only so many seats to the show, so you kind of got to, kind of got to beat them out, and uh, just outperform them. And you did. I did, yeah. Uh, To be fair, there's only like four RPs there, so. (laughs) Were there other RPs selected, or just you? At that time, it was just me. That's crazy. Four dudes? Well, no, I mean, at the, I know, I know, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just, it's, um, yeah. Not a lot have been there. I think in total, in the entire existence, I, it may not even be double digit. It might be 10. How so. long is the training? Can you say that just from start to uh, finish? Oof, it depends. Uh, whatever. No injuries. Rating. Perfect case yeah, scenario. Perfect case. Um, uh, probably about a year. Um, Whoa. Before all your schools and stuff are done. And again, that depends on the ratings. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but uh, we'll say a year. Yeah. And then I get you placed where? If get you placed in a position where? Yeah. So it pretty much. Depending on your job, there it gets you placed in position to do your job. Essentially, to do your job. Um, yeah. So again, you're in a in a very kind of close knit society, and th- half of the time you're being observed uh, for selection. There is, yeah, the physical fit. Yeah, obviously the physical fitness stuff. We all know about that, right? It's yeah. very grueling, and you got to be in shape and stuff. Great. You got to be able to shoot. You got to be able to speak fluently. You got you take an IQ test. You have a, have a certain IQ. Um, like they want the best of the best. Um, so once you're done with your pipeline and put in whatever section you're going to be working in, um, they just want to trust that once they throw you out there, because it is such a small community, mm-hmm. it's not like being a battalion. You don't have a lot of help with you. Mm-hmm. When you're when you're in these situations with that organization, you are alone a lot. Mm. They need to trust that you know what you're doing. That's pretty much it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I like that. Yeah. I yeah, like yeah. the idea of like oh, indivi- big boy individual big boy accountability. Rules. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Well, that's what they always tell you will happen when you get to like an infantry right, unit. Right, right, right. Or like you get to stay or you get to wherever Mars, however they sell it sure. to you. Sure. I mean, so it's good to hear that there, it actually does exist. No, yeah, absolutely. Right? And, so you um, do like a bunch of stuff like what, like SEER school and things yeah, like that? Yeah, I did SEER school. Um, I did jump school. I did a couple other. Um, those are public knowledge. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't want to get you. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I know, Everyone I know. knows. Grand Thumb, you know, all that stuff. Like literally, this is all stuff people know. Um, um, but no, there, but there is a couple, like, I, I won't say anything here, obviously, but like, there's a really cool, like, you see movies about them going to like a specialty class for something. Yeah. And I went to a few of those. I'm like, fuck, these guys are smart. Like the people, I mean, professors and stuff teaching it and stuff like yeah. Ivy league dudes coming down to check. Hey, this is, yeah, yeah it was, it was cool. Now you, you definitely, you get, you get your bang for your buck, but you're like, you gotta, Oh, this is how Excel works. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah. So no, it was fun, like, especially even in our SEER school, it was a, a special operations SEER. So it wasn't like, yeah. hey, hey, go fucking eat bugs in the wilderness. It was specific to the mission that we were doing. It was funny. I uh, I was kind of cocky. Like anybody, I, I think you have to be a little cocky to be in that organization. Um, so I was still going through my pipeline. And I was I was at the part of SEER where you're getting worked over, literally getting punched in the face. Like, <laughs> it, was, it was funny. And so this... Uh, team had just like stripped you naked and put you in like garms and chains and you're getting beaten up. They're like, why, why? Blah, it's blah, to blah. simulate that you've been captured yeah, by oh, if enemy combatants. Yes, yeah. it's to simulate how you would handle being captured. And um, so you're getting beat up. And I don't know, um, I've heard from a lot of other people who've been to different variations of Seer, but it's always, they always have short little women work you over. I don't know why they, I don't know if it's a mental thing, but it's definitely got to be mental. I, because they're Something with the beating the crap out of you. Yeah, the emasculating aspects beating the of it, crap yeah. out of you. And so I was, I was sitting there, I was just, Taking my licks <laughs> and just like, wow, what a fun school this is. I mean, yeah. Beat up. And um, there's a rule where they can't, uh, there's like a certain way they have to hit you and stuff. And so she had been slapping in the face. And one time her thumb had caught me above the eyebrow and I got like an abrasion. I was bleeding. Mm-hmm. She didn't break character. She's like, oh, okay, give me one second. Like, got the flight doc. And he came in and he was like, <laughs> he's like sharing the flashlight in my eyes. And it was kind of a break in training because at that point you'd been in a cell for days and just like tired and weak. And 
I was just like, let me see if I can still be funny, as I'm one to do. And I was like, he's like, you're okay? He's, he's like, you're bleeding a little bit. I'm like, yeah, I'm fine, fine. He's like, you can continue? And I was like, yeah, I'm fine. And then he was about to leave, and I was like, hey, Doc. I was like, I think she likes me, bro. And he goes, he turned around dead. So he goes, don't fucking make jokes. <laughs> it's like, this ain't, this ain't the place, bro. Like, what are you doing? And I was like, oh, no, what, can't we have fun around here? Yeah. <laughs> guys can't have fun? Sorry, guys. I just watched Deadpool. Yeah, so, right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was doing my best Wade Wilson. And yeah. I was just like, I think she likes me. And he's like, don't. What? He's like, what the fuck? He's like, she can see you through the glass right now. <laughs> she's, yeah. just, she's just like icing down yeah, her knuckles. Exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. <sighs> now, so even schools like that, man, you learn a lot of really, really cool, like real world uh, applicable things. You know what's funny? I will say this too. I haven't told you this story, but it's just it's funny. I, uh, y- you get trained if like you get rolled up in a certain country and stuff. And um, I never luckily got into anything close like that. But I was coming back from Ireland, uh, this family trip where I hung out with our best friend, Shane Gillis. Yeah. And uh, he bought me shots. Thank you, Shane. And uh, I just, will, want, I just want to clip that. That's all. So I we yeah. will share the photo because <laughs> Shane follows me, and I told him Mike was at the Notre Dame game where yeah. he was performing. Yeah. I said, Shane, you got to meet this guy. He's the coolest dude in the world. You're gonna love him. Yeah, yeah, bop, yeah. bop, bop, bop. No, flowers, I met, I met Phil. I met his parents. It was fantastic. It was jump great. cut. Yeah. Shane, he sent me the photo. <laughs> I sent him the photo. I was yeah. seething with rage yeah. that I wasn't there. Yeah, no, I was but so I love super, it. Super. Yeah, Shane's the nicest guy. Um, but uh, so I'm coming back from that trip from Ireland again with a family. It's a vacation. Yeah. And so your I'm family. At, yeah. 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 And so uh, I'm at customs, and my family had already been through, and I'm sending the passport. And I got this big Irish fuck who like who he was. I don't know what his problem was, but he was just like, okay, uh, who you traveling with? And I was like, oh, my family. They're up there somewhere. He's like, all right. He's like, what were you doing here? I was like, just vacation. And he's like, uh-huh. And he's like looking at me. He's like, what do you do? And I was like, I'm in the Navy. And he goes, huh. And it was like, and again, I just, I look the way I look. I get it. Yeah. And uh, he was like. We match the description. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I get flagged. We go to Disney World. I get pulled aside every single time. And dude. so uh, I was like, yeah, I'm the Navy. He goes, huh. He goes, what do you do in the Navy? And I was like, I'm a chaplain's assistant. He goes, huh. He's like, I'm a chaplain's assistant. Aren't tattooed and in shape like that. And I was like, you're right. But <laughs> um, I was like, yeah. And then he's like. Uh, he's like, usually a lot of special operators come through here and say chaplain's assistant. And I was like, cool, in Ireland, but okay. <laughs> and he was like, he's like, yeah. And he was like, in the back of my mind, I'm like, am I about to be rolled up in yeah. Ireland? And I was yeah. like, for in the one time I'm not do- I'm on vacation with my yeah. family. And he's just like, fuck this. Yeah, I know who the fuck you are. Yeah. And I was just like, uh-huh. I see you, mate. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And uh, it was just so funny. He was so hesitant. He gave me a passport back. He's like, all right, next. And I was like, I almost got rolled up in Ireland. What if your one phone call was to Shane? Yeah. He's oh, just funny. like, call yeah, yeah. Shane. Be yeah. like, hey, remember remember me? I'm the guy from the bar. <laughs> yeah. I'm in jail now. Yeah. <laughs> My, it would work. It would work. Shane, get me out of jail when, when I'm in Ireland. He has pull there. Yeah, sure. he does. Yeah. He's, He's got pull anywhere. That's true. Yeah. I hope he makes it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I yeah, hope it works out for him. young, struggling comedian Shane Gillis. Look him up. Yeah. yeah he's a good guy. <laughs> I hope this boost is what he needs. Yeah. It is the perfect internet moment. Because yeah. you, you've always said to me, Zach, why do you tag people? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, because you never know. That is true. But, you, it, but again, you've built this kind of big culture around your following that like, nah. it's, it's, no, I'm just saying like it's celebrities and politicians and stuff like you have some in a little bit everywhere. So it was just funny that you could use your one in to get me to have shots with Shane Gillis and his family. Dude, I'm pulling up yeah, for the boys. It was funny. Twenty four seven, I'm for the and he boys. Paid for him. Such a nice guy. Yeah, of, of course he did. But like, gentleman. I knew, I knew if there's ever a, like a thing that I wanted to happen, it's I want one of my closest friends to meet someone. At, like, you love football. You love Notre Dame football. He's there. You're in Ireland with your family. Yeah, yeah. Bro, I'm, I'm going for it. It was a perfect vacation. It was <laughs> like literally, it's in my favorites on and my. And it's phone. actually, it's actually funny too because uh, we talked about. Um, his new special hadn't come out yet, and I was like, yeah, I kind of talked about the military a little bit, but uh, he was like, yeah, and he's like, I actually make a joke about Navy SEALs uh, in my new special. And I was like, no way. I was like, let me hear it. And it was the one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. And it was a great joke. And uh, he was like, yeah, he's like, I, I started doing that uh, that joke in San Diego, and my buddy Louie uh, told me not to do it. And, I, and he was like, oh, Louis C.K. I was like, I know. <laughs> yeah. you know I'm a comedy nerd. I know. <laughs> you don't have to say that. That's so cool. I know you were, I know you were running shit by Louis C.K., the yeah. god of stand-up. Yeah. Well, um, you're my Louis C.K. Oh, I, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm oh, running well. stuff by you. Yeah, all right. No, so, I mean, I again, I don't want to, like, harp on it because yeah. it, it is really cool and it's incredible um, that you've done it. And you were there for a while. You did a lot of different things. Yeah. But if there is there any, like, moments that, like, stick out from well, your time? Well, there's two because... With, can yeah. I say the command? I'm sorry. <laughs> Do I call it the command? Uh, you can say the command, yeah. The, yeah. the command? Yeah, yeah. Um, and I don't want you to, like... You know, I don't want this to be like your like aha tell all book moment. But no, I mean, that'll I, I come don't out know. soon. Yeah, but 
Um, no, six years from now. Yeah, it's, yeah, exactly. Yeah. When I retire. No, it. Uh, uh, there are two moments that I, I've talked about publicly before. Obviously, I'm not going to attach names or anything. But I, it's kind of like the the ludicrousness of the place, right? Is uh, my first my first overseas trip with them. I was kind of just getting a lay of the land. I wasn't part of anything. And, yeah. Um, we had lost uh, Ryan Owens, who's the operator. Uh, he was killed on a mission, and so part of being the RP um, is you have to do angel flights sometimes because mm-hmm. you know you gotta. Uh, if anybody's been part of a guarding angel flight, it's very depressing. Yes, learned a big empty aircraft with the a casket and the American flag on top, and so got a notification angel flight. Um, but this at the time Trump had just been elected, and he had signed off on that. So at that level, has come from the president for an ops go down, and um, he signed off on it. And so we got word when we landed in Dover that uh, President Trump's coming through, which at the time was still such a weird thing to hear. President Trump, you know what I mean? He had just he had just came in, and uh, we're like, President Trump's coming through. And we're like, oh shit! And so we, you know, me and a couple of guys that were on the on the flight look like shit. You know, we've been traveling. We mm-hmm. we had to stop and re-ice his body and do all the things you got to do. And so, and obviously, it's a sad trip anyway. Mm-hmm. And um, so we're standing there looking like ass, and. Uh, we lowered the ramp, and a couple other teammates from all over the place came through, and they, you know, had all their stuff on, and they looked good. And then out of nowhere, this uh, this kind of huge gaggle of like Air Force and Army, and like a lot of stars and bars, and like, oh shit, it's a fucking, it's a photo op, pretty much. And me and a couple of the guys that made the, tr- we're kind of getting pushed to the back because mm-hmm. like at, it's at the back of the aircraft, it's open, his casket's there, it's got the flag on top. And they're kind of pushing us to the front of the aircraft so they can be there when President Trump comes. And it got to the point that a, a lot of us are like, well, we don't want to be dead. We're like, what the f- like, who the fuck are these people? And I will say, the Air Force guy, the enlisted guy in charge of the flight, uh, he kind of took notice of it. And he'd, he'd sat there with us the whole flight, obviously. And uh, he just goes, hey, everybody, I got a question. He goes, who knows who's in this casket? And everyone's kind of like, oh, oh, oh. And he goes, if you don't know the name of this man, he's like, get the fuck off my airplane. And so all those stars and bars kind of... Fuck uh, yes. Oh, it was awesome. It was awesome. Fuck yes. And uh, so they kind of like ghoulishly like, Ugh, our photo op is done. And, um, it's pathetic they did that Oh, I mean, place. you know how it goes, though. They don't think about it like that. They think about President Trump's... <laughs> you know how it goes, but... I do. But again, I think... But in, death is the highest form of celebrity, and I've seen yeah. people latch oh, yeah. themselves onto that, and it makes me sick. No, but again, at the same time, it was such a human moment with that one Air Force, you know, guy who was like, name him, name him. And they were like, Whoa. And he's like, get off my aircraft. So they did. And then, so President Trump comes through. And it was my first time seeing him in person. He's a big dude. Like, he's like 6'4". He's, he's, he's a big dude. And um, uh, normal size hands. And he, uh, he comes on, and he's, and he's showing respect. And it's, it's, a, it's such a weird moment because I am at this brand new unit. We had had our first casualty since I'd been there. Um, it's the president, and it's President Trump. And he's got his little, you know, team with him and stuff. And he's doing his slow salute to a fallen operator. And I'm like, what a what a life, right? And so uh, he kind of deboards. And you could kind of see, obviously, everybody has an opinion on President Trump and stuff. But at that time, my opinion of him was he might be OK. Whatever happened to him, right? But at the time, it was so brand new. Here's this guy you know, you'd seen on TV as a celebrity doing the act as the president, paying respect to a fallen service member Mm -hmm. and actually having some concern on him. He's very stoic. Yeah. But having some like, hmm, this is sad. You know what I mean? Um, They all don't do that. Yeah, exactly. That's that's just a fact. Exactly. So I got to see that in person. So I'm not into politics by any means, but I saw a human being that day. That's all I'm saying about that. But uh, so they leave, and I'm just like, we're standing there. It's like midnight, and all the... All the other team guys are getting on like black hawks and their dress blues, which is a boss move. <laughs> and they're just like taking off and, and yeah. Uh, yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> I've never seen something cooler than a dude in dress blues hop on a black hawk and just be like, all right, let's go. <laughs> Damn. And, uh, yeah, oh yeah. They, they head full. And so uh, they're moving uh, Ryan's body off and stuff. And I go to my buddy and I was like, man, it was wild. Was like, yeah. And I was, like, I was like, yeah, fucking President Trump. He's a big dude. It's weird. It's weird. And he was like, yeah. And he's like, yeah. And, uh, uh, it's like, yeah, and his daughter, too. And I was like, oh, she's hot. Could you imagine if she was here? And he was like, yeah, he was right next to her. And I was like, what? What are you talking about? He's like, she was, he was, she was right next to him the whole time. 
and he was like, he's like, bro, were you staring at President Trump so hard <laughs> that you blocked <laughs> off everything else that was going on? And I was like, I got lost in the man's hair. What can I say? I was just like, oh, this is not a cool moment for me. But I was like, yeah, I was just kind of staring at him the whole time. I truly was so hyper focused on what this man was doing that I missed all the other people around him. But well, I mean, I, <laughs> I don't know. I, I would say I think it's because you, were, you what you said kind of gives away to it. You were trying to see how he would respond in yeah, the moment. Yeah, that's what I was looking for. Yeah. Because ultimately, not every president does that. Sure, Most, sure. Uh, some, more recently, they've had to been told to do that, yeah, yeah. which is disgusting and pathetic. Yeah. Um, but, um, you know, they, the fact that he did that, like, you're like, well, how is he going to handle this? Because, like... You had just seen people get kicked off a bird because they yeah, wanted yeah. to just be in a moment yeah. with him. Yeah. And uh, I, I don't know. I I just can't imagine some of it. Like, yeah. Cause especially because Dover's where everyone goes. Yep. That's where everyone goes. Yep. You know, when they, we bring them home, that's where they land. Yeah. No, it was, uh, it was a weird, intense moment. So that was at the beginning of my time there. Yeah. And then, uh, my very last, well, uh, second to last trip, um, we were in Afghanistan and uh, – they were doing what's called VI operations, vehicle interception, and um, pretty much just like tracking down vehicles coming in from different countries. And yeah. Uh, who, yeah, or carrying things they shouldn't be carrying. And um, so <laughs> I'm about to give away mission actual here. But so they were doing that, and we got word that one of our guys got shot uh, and one of these VIs gone wrong. And so from what we had heard, I was in the talk. I wasn't even, I was nowhere near the end. And they're like, we're flying him in. He got shot nine times from an AK. Holy from, shit. From about, I would say, uh, it's past that door. But essentially, the guy was well hidden, and he just saw the, the point man and just lit him up. He shot nine times. Again, that's 7.62. That will rip a human being in half. Yes. Now, this this particular operator happened to be about 6.5, 200 plus. Big dude. And so that's why they have him in front, because he has the Batman voice. He's more intimidating. Yeah. And so he, um, we're expecting a body, right? And so we're like, okay, another angel flight. I'd, done a, I'd already done a few while I was there anyway, so I was like, cool, <laughs> great. And uh, so they get him to the Roll 3 hospital, and uh, he's stable at the time because uh, every single round that his uh, uh, plate carrier didn't intercept hit him in the stomach, and mm. it had missed every major thing. He was dying, but he wasn't dead. And um, so they put him in the Roll 3 hospital, and he emptied the blood bank himself because they kept putting blood through him. And I don't know if you've seen a roll through hospital blood bank. It's pretty big. Uh -uh. There's a lot of bags of blood. Yeah. This man emptied it himself. I believe they're trauma units. Yes. Yeah. So they're supposed to they anticipate that. Yes. So it got to the point where the surgeon at the time goes, he gets on the loudspeaker. And at that base, it was only it was only Americans and Italians, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and he goes on the loudspeaker and he just goes, hey, anybody with whatever blood type, he's like, if you can donate, come donate. Again, he's expectant. We're expecting him to die. Damn. And, and so they're like, okay. And then they're like, well, he's still stable. We're pushing all our blood through him. And he just goes, uh, he gets on the MC again and goes, anybody who's willing to donate blood, please come to the hospital. And they said within five minutes, the entire base was empty and the line around the hospital was wrapped all the way around. Somebody has camera footage of every single person on that base donating blood to save this stranger they had met. And he's alive. <laughs> he survived. And I thought that was such a, again, in this kind of crazy unit that I was in, all these insane things happening all the time, these human moments were so jarring. These were Italian-American forces who had no idea who was in there. They had no idea Deb grew all that. They just heard an American's dying. We need help. And they all helped it. Every single person. The line was wrapped around the hospital. But now he's he's learned to walk again. He's he's alive. It's awesome. Yeah. It's How on God's green earth yeah. do you go from that? Yeah. To hey, <laughs> would you like to join the Navy? <laughs> right, yeah. To recruiting. Um, it was it was tough as one can imagine. Yeah. Uh so had to get a B billet. Yeah. So essentially to wrap all that up, I had come off this and, and then again, my personal life at the time was chaotic. Too, yeah. So it was a lot, a lot, a lot. And I had gone to the team psych because you have to go all the time. Yeah. And uh, she was like, "You are suffering from severe burnout. Like, so, like she's like, even for the people here, she's like, you are fucking, yeah, yeah." <laughs> and I was like, "Well, I can feel it. That makes sense." 
And um, because yeah, at the t- yeah, oh yeah, at the time my escapism was like, when's the next trip? I'll go, I'll go, I'll go. I just wanted to get away. I can't imagine. I was, can't imagine it, having that direct line to. to it was chaos. it was it was wild. I think it would kill me. Yeah, it almost did. <laughs> and yeah. um, so I was like, yeah. And she goes, well, okay, you just reenlisted. Do you? Uh, I would recommend doing a shore billet. And I was like, well, I've never done that. Now at this point, I'm you know. 13 deployments deep. I had nine with special operations and then the four conventional with the Marine Corps. So I was pretty well seasoned as far as deployment. And that was for that big ribbon sack comes from. And so I was like, yeah, uh, all right, I'll think about it. So I go back in the office and I'm talking to the boys and they're like, yeah, I think, because at the time my old podcast had been exploded. So at the time, too, well, the whole time I'm in DevGuru, I'm mm-hmm. on this huge pla- – I'm public. Huge. I am enormous. Very, it's, very public. It's a very big – especially in the military culture, it's an enormous podcast. And, I can't, I, and, again, I never talked about work or anything, but, like, so I was in between trips, like, coming back and be like, anyway, here's the story. Like, I, I – it was such a duality. Of, like, it's how I first learned about you. Yeah, on exactly. the podcast. You were so, the guy, and I knew the second you started talking, you weren't lying. Yeah. No, I would never – I hate embellishment. I hate lying, which is why recruiting was so tough. Yeah. Um, but so I – go and i was like well maybe recruiting because i have a big social media presence um i i need a, a shore billet and to your point of how do you go from that to that i get selected to do recruiting and i was told you're going to be a special warfare scout so coming from the most elite special warfare unit in the navy mm-hmm. um you're going to train uh people that want to go to buds or swick school or re- rescue school and you know all- yeah i know i mean i know all the things right I, i'd serve at the best level so i was like perfect fine it sounds cool and uh, I go to recruiting school in Florida, and I this set, my face drops so low because I had just come from you know a place where you know you don't really get haircuts you know you, everybody's a first name basis. I um, the uh, the command master chief knew me because I was getting <laughs> put in the newspaper about catfish articles. And I I'd been in his office. This man had two silver stars, and he's like, "Mike, what the fuck is this?" Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I'm, "It's not me, I promise." Well, Bob. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and he it was so funny too because he goes, "Yeah, it's, I've seen your podcast and stuff." He goes, "It'd be it would be ironic for me, a Navy SEAL, to tell you not to have a podcast." He made the joke too. Yeah, and, and uh, he was like, "So just just be careful." He's like, "You haven't you haven't broken your rules or anything." I was like, "Yeah, no worries." Yeah. And so my time will come when I launch a business <laughs> podcast. <laughs> exactly. How to seal business that's right that's it how to seal business hey 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 trademark that and um so i go from this insane uh op tempo to hey everybody welcome to recruiting school not none of these i mean of of course people had deployment stuff but i went to a totally different world where nobody is wanting to push for that place that you're push 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 all the time yeah and everybody wanted to do the bare minimum everybody looks sloppy um all the motivation was so fake and forced and they're like all right, well, this is how you work Salesforce. And I'm like, okay. And like, well, what you need to do is enter their information. And it's just like you find out very quickly recruiting. For me, is not it's not the military. It's a sales job. It's an it absolute is. sales job. You said Salesforce. Yeah, exactly. It's a customer relationship management tool yeah. that and they teach you about in business school. And so <laughs> like, I'm like, I'm just sitting there in all these classes where they're like, all right, let's simulate you talking to a teacher. And I'm like, <sighs> like so I am just Hello. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so I remember one time um, we were doing, because it's still during COVID and stuff, and uh, uh, we had virtual classes sometimes. So I'd be in the hotel room. That's where I introduce you to the hotel dogs. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, hotel dogs, by the way, if you, take a, if you take a coffee mug, you put hot dogs in them, you heat them up in the microwave, take notes, heat them up in the microwave, and then you have the handle because it's hot, and then you just spray your condiment in the bottom of the cup, and you just dip them in the hot in the thing. Anyway, I think they're fucking great. You know what I love about you? <laughs> I love that we casually talked about dev group and you couldn't make eye contact with a single person. But you proudly looked right down the barrel. Yeah. As you described the loneliest meal I've ever heard. It was so good. Was so <laughs> Hotel good. dogs. Hotel dogs patent pending. Yeah. <laughs> um but yeah, so but anyway, we were at, we were doing a Zoom thing and one of the instructors was talking about uh, something about combat came up and i was nope. uh, well this is what happened um and uh he was just like yeah and he's like i've never been in that situation but you know i can kill a paper target haha <laughs> everyone's laughing and stuff and he goes unless anybody out there has a different story and i just kind of raised my hand because i i the the way you described me uh, when we first met is you said you reek of violence <laughs> that's the first way you described me. you said i can smell it on you yeah <laughs> you reek of violence yeah which is actually a very high praise so i appreciate yeah. that yeah, yeah man um but yeah. um so here's an outside dog. Yeah, there I'm just reeking of violence eating yeah. my hotel dogs. And uh, this chief is like, yeah, so 
And he goes, oh, Petty Officer Sins, you have a thing? And I was like, and I kind of put it down, I was like, no, I, it's a little early for war stories. And he goes, no, no, come on, come on, hit us with it. And I was like, I haven't even heard this. a war story before, <laughs> but they're not funny. And um, You're all going to feel less than by so, the time well, I'm done. No, it wasn't even yeah. that. I just talked about um, one of the ticks we got into where the joke was, RP got a kill. I definitely did. It was the turret gunner. But <laughs> no. um, uh, we had engaged a guy in the mud hut who engages. He engages first. And... Uh, we had eliminated him, and we sent the scouts up there. It's like, yeah, he's dead as fuck. And uh, they came back, and uh, that was the first time I actually got to return fire. And they're like, they're like, oh, RP, we saw you down the right tire shooting. I was like, yeah, yeah. And they were like, oh, shit, let's just say RP got this one. Like, it was just a joke. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? And so that's, I kind of told them. In the moment, it's funny. But then the look of horror on all these screens and faces, and they're like, oh, okay. <laughs> like, yeah. it was just such a different universe. Yeah. It, like, it, I, I felt like I was talking, like, Chinese. You know what I mean? Like, and and then Chief was just like, okay, thanks for that. And I was like, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> Put you on mute. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Leave room. We'll be right yeah. back. Yeah, we'll right so back. I just yeah. hit everybody with a Despresso Espresso in the morning. <laughs> yeah, well, that's good. That was kind of you to yeah, sh- yeah. scare the to, shit out to of just them. just ruin their fucking day. But again, it was just, it was culture shock like that. I was like, man, I am not, I'm not with the boys anymore. It's not, it's, a, I'm in the Navy, I'm wearing the uniform, but I feel like I'm not, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, um, and there's so many different things happening. You're moving. Oh, yeah, yeah. You, you know, your podcast and stuff, you're no longer doing that. Yeah. Um, your personal life, all those things are happening, too. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, and on top of it, you left the place that arguably is the highest level of fulfillment. Yeah, no. I I, I think it was funny because, again, my personal life was just such a ray. Um, but at the same time, work satisfaction was through the roof. Yeah. Every time you went onto that compound, you're like, F-. I mean, you could just smell the competition. And I, when I say smell the competition, everybody was trying to be the best version of themselves. Yeah. Everybody, you can get fired from that place at any time. That's the only place in like the military. God, like, that's kind of cool. It was fantastic. I've everybody, always said I hate that you can't get fired in the military. Oh, you can get fired from those organizations. Good. And a- everybody from the dude who fucking processed paperwork to the dude who, uh, you know, fucking even the janitor even a civilian the janitors of the building they were just like, everybody was in a good mood all the time because everybody could not wait to come to work and actually make a difference so that was the environment i was in for four years and it was fantastic um and then to go to recruiting where it's just like yeah we just we talk to kids and we try to sell the navy that we don't like it's like fuck so it was an absolute drop down of work satisfaction dude i honestly can't imagine that night and day switch yeah but. it was it was rough. it was really really rough i um i know i told you the story but um when i first got there uh, I mean, we can tell. I have some funny recruiter stories, but like, I there was a district chief at the time who he just he was king recruiter. Recru- he'd, he'd only done recruiting, and he had uh, pretty much said like, since he needs to pick it up. I'm like, I am having culture shock. I'm not doing well here. Like, this isn't my yeah. cup of tea anyway. I'm trying to learn, but nobody teaches in recruiting. Yeah, and uh, but he was like pretty much talking shit, and I was like, look, man, the only reason you're a chief is because. Uh, you're a chief in recruiting. He's. I was like, you can't lead in the fleet because you're a fucking coward. And I'm just talking to this dude, like, and he's like, what the fuck? And so I, and then I kind of got fired into the job I was promised anyway. He's like, get him out of my district, make him a special warfare scout. And I was like, okay. <laughs> well, if anybody takes away anything from this podcast, <laughs> it, when you're not happy with your job, yeah. call your boss a coward. Yeah, and, get, and then get fired like a coward. <laughs> and then get fired like a coward, which uh, yeah. we will talk about a little bit more uh, yeah. when we come back. I've got to hit the head real quick, but okay. yeah. We'll be right back. And you're back with two Navy SEALs. <laughs> uh, just talking team guy stuff. Just you know? team guy talk. Yeah. Hey, welcome back to team guy talk. Yeah, you know, so the shades, if you clip that and we have the shades on, everyone, will, everyone will believe it. Let's yeah. make a clip. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, go ahead. And you're back with team guy talk. Yeah. Just two team guys talking about life on the battlefield and off and how to hold our breath in a war-torn place that it didn't really matter. Mike, what do you got for us? Pull ups, <laughs> lots of pull ups, and we're sponsored by Frog <laughs> Fuel. <laughs> I don't know if that's a real company. Uh, I'm not being disparaging. I think it is actually, but all right, it, it is uh, Frog Fuel made out of real frogs. That's right. Mike, do you <laughs> like Frog Fuel? <laughs> Love it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I'm the co-host who doesn't give you anything. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, this is way too. You know, this reminds me of uh, One Punch Dad's podcast clips. Oh yeah, yeah. He's like, yeah, yeah brother. You know, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. he's like, yeah. exactly. Just oh hell make, yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Love One Punch Dad. Shout out. Shout out One Punch Dad. One of the best out there. Um, I love everything he does. His uh, Staff War series is incredible. Oh, it's fantastic. And again, it just shows that how creative he. uh, We'll we'll wrap him up in a second. But how creative is just one man with a camera? You know, he's just making really good content. Yeah, it's it's he's fantastic. Really good. You should check him out everywhere. One Punch Dad. You probably know about him, but my favorite um series Mm -hmm. is uh, his Chaplin stuff. 
And yeah, the whole yeah. concept oh, yeah, is yeah, chaplains yeah, yeah. before they enlist. And yeah. he's like, well, they just turned into hamburger meat, and, you know, <laughs> that's war. And anyways, we could bow our heads. Yeah. <laughs> It's so good. Nah, it's great. It's so good, but not as good as you were at calling your boss a coward oh, at work. Oh, what a callback. What a callback. What a reference. Yeah, so um, I got fired upward, essentially. Who'd you call first? Who would I call? Oh, <laughs> I think you called me, but mm, yeah. What have I, I call- ever called you? <laughs> you called. You literally called me. Nah. You literally called me. You're like, I think I got fired. And I was, <laughs> and I was like, oh, listen, dude, hang on. Whoa, whoa. Do we need to talk about this on a secure line? Yeah, 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 <laughs> exactly. Well, it's funny because like, the day-to-day recruiting thing, I just, I, I'm just i introverted by nature, hence why wearing sunglasses. But I uh, I just wasn't good about selling the Navy to somebody who doesn't know anything about it because at the same time, I don't know everything about the Navy. I learned, to be fair, in recruiting, I learned about so many things the Navy has to offer. I had no fucking idea. Yeah. You're like, just, what do you mean we got ships? Yeah, exactly, yeah. The Water? Fuck? Our camis don't turn orange? <laughs> Dude, I got some guys I got to call. Yeah, exactly, yeah. I got some phone calls to make. No, I just, I learned so much. So, like, for somebody whose job it is to promote the organization, um, I just didn't know that much about it, and I just wasn't very good at it anyway. So, yeah, I got uh, one of the, my favorite stories. I told on my podcast, Stand By with Mike Cincy. I told the story on that, but... Uh, what do you, what's your best episode uh, the, on the standby with Mike Cincy? Is it? Yeah, is it I think yours is second, I believe. Yeah, because it's two parter, first <laughs> and second. That's that's hey, why. Hey, hey. Hey. Because I'm egotistical. Um, that's true. No, it was no. Good. yours episode was very good. No, but uh, so like one of the craziest stories was um, I had to go to a high school, and again another thing of like recruiting is like I'm like a dude in my 30s talking to these high schoolers. Like, why the fuck? None of them care. None of yeah. them. I'm in Houston, Texas, looking the way I look. No, I all these Hispanic kids like. Why are you here? You know, nobody gives a shit. But there was one kid at a high school. He came up to the booth and a little table set up we had. And he's like, hey, I've always interested. And they all say, I want to be a Navy SEAL, which, fine, makes sense. And I go, okay. How do you feel about being divorced? Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Do you like Trent? Anyway. uh, (laughs) Ever heard of the liver king? (laughs) (laughs) And so I was like, okay, cool, man. And uh, he's like, "Ah, I'm 17 and uh, my dad wants to be he wants me to be, again, his quote, wants me to be a sniper in the Marines. And I go, because that's how that works. And I was like, okay, well, um, yeah. if you and your dad want to talk about any other possibilities, uh, here's my card and come to the office. And he's like, yeah, I'll, I'll have him take me after school. I was like, okay, cool. So back in the office, I had set an appointment, as we call it in the biz. So I'm all like, yeah. And um, so this kid comes in. He goes, yeah, my, my dad's uh, parking outside. He's coming in. Like, okay. And this dude walks in, and he... Again, I'm in Houston. Houston loves their Astros, the baseball team. And this guy has a Houston Astros T-shirt, Houston Astros hat, Mm -hmm. Houston Astros face mask because it was still during the time. And he, like, walks in. And even through his hat and his face mask, I can see his eyes, obviously. And it's always hot in Houston, so he's sweating. But he is, like, visibly furious. Mm. And I'm like, okay. And so he comes, and he, like, I shake and say, hey, what's going on, Mike? And he, like, kind of, like, gives me, like, a half ass handshake. And I go, oh, God, what is it? I was like, have a seat. And um, he goes... And I go, so how, how can I help you, gentlemen? And he goes, he goes, I, and he like hushes his son. His son doesn't say a word this entire exchange. And he goes, my son is going to be a Marine Corps sniper. He talks to you for 10 fucking seconds, and now he's a Navy SEAL. How the fuck does that happen? And I go, your son's none of those things. <laughs> um, Salesmanship, sir. Yeah, I was like, yeah, I was like, have you seen the ribbons? And Hang on, have you seen? <laughs> this one looks like a starfish. Yeah, <laughs> that's what really reeled him in. And so I was like, no, I was like, no, I talked to your son uh, at his high school. He wanted more information, so that's what you guys are here for. And he goes, he goes, he's not signing shit. He's not fucking doing this. He goes, I know how the Navy operates. And in my mind, he goes, this guy's a vet. He's a Marine Corps vet. You know what I mean? He's, he doesn't like the Navy, whatever. All these boomers. And I was like, okay. And he goes, how, he's like, I just want to know how the fuck you can say my son is a Navy SEAL. And at this point, um, the other recruiter, the female in the office, can sense, like, the tension building. Mm-hmm. And she just gets up and leaves and locks herself in the back room. <laughs> and I was like, wow. well, it's fair, yeah. yeah. And so I'm sitting there. And you're just, like, taking off your, yeah, yeah, cool, yeah, well, cool, so, cool. Yeah, and so yeah. <laughs> that's my thing, right? You, have, you know, when you're in a position where somebody comes at you with brute anger and you're not ready for it, you're just, I'm so confused, you yeah. know what I mean? And I'm just like... Wait, I'm sorry. What is happening? And he and he like stands up and he's like he's like all the fucking navy does is fucking drink in the barracks and don't fucking do anything. How can you call that a career? He's like it's a bunch of pussies and blah blah blah. Brother. And and I'm like and I'm like <laughs> and again, I am so confused. And I was like, "Okay, I was like, so you're a veteran?" I assumed. I was like, "You're a veteran?" He's like, "No." And I was like, 
then be quiet. And that was my first kind of like, yeah. bro, what the fuck is this? And he's like, and he's still standing over my desk. He's like trying to posture on me. And he's like, he's like, we're out of here. He's like, this is fucking bullshit. He's like, I don't want to hear you ever speak in my son again, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, and he's like, and fuck the Navy and your nonsense. And I go, man, I'm going to tell you right now. I was like, when you talk about the Navy, not knowing anything, you know, you're looking at the Navy, bro. Like, yeah. I may not be the most who you are motherfucker in the world, but you're sitting there talking about what I do to my face. And I yeah. was like, I'm not going to let you sit there and disrespect me. I was like, now we can either handle this like adults or you can get the fuck out. And he goes, well, I'm going to leave. And I was like, that'd be the safest option for you right now. Yeah. <laughs> and so he goes, and it was so funny because we have those big like um, heavy doors that are like locked. Yeah. And he, so he tries to slam it, but it doesn't slam. And, goes, and then like, yeah, sh- slowly closes. Yeah. And so I was just like, then I'm like, whoo, and I'm all fired up and walking around. And, uh, uh, the other petty officer comes out and I go, hey, wh- what the fuck was that? She goes, I thought there was going to be a fight. And I was like, well, there was, but also fucking hit him with the chair. Have my back. Yeah. What the fuck is this? And she's like, oh, no, no. And so I'm all fuck. I'm pacing. So I go into the back. I'm, I used to work in a joint office. So all the other branches are there. I walk in the back. And I walk into the Marine uh, recruiting office and the gunnery sergeant in the station, this big jack black guy. And he's like, he's just very Marine. And I walk in, I was like, Gunny, I was like, man, I was like, if this fucking kid, bought, and I'm now, and now I'm unloading on him. And he's like, what's going on? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I was like, uh, I was like, this guy fucking comes in, he talks shit to my face. He makes me, he's trying to fight and blah, blah. And Gunny goes, oh, damn, what happened in here? He's like, that's, that's failure to stop in my office. He's like, I just yeah. the chest one in the head. They come in like that. Yeah. And I was like, this is the guy I need to talk to. Yeah. He's fucking firing me up. He's like, you want to, he have a bench press. And he's like, you want to hit some bench? And I was like, I don't know, Gunny, I need to take a walk. Yeah. Like, I'm fucking fired up right now so it's like so literally even when you're trying to do your job in recruiting obviously that's a one-off story but like this guy this dad comes in and just wants to fight me yeah and i'm like bro like what the fuck that's just shows like the kind of people you're dealing with in recruiting and like what a fucking nightmare it was oh, i was just so if he only knew if well that's the thing if he too. only knew that one if, he, if he's in a sniper he's gonna drink in the barracks most of his life yeah, yeah and if yeah. he's good at being a sniper his what will happen is he'll be his son will be dressed like a bush shitting in Nalgene bottles. Yeah, yeah. Like that's that's the yeah. life he wants for him. But at the same time, so stories like that, like while they're like goofy and stuff, I just felt so bad for the kid. You yeah, know what I mean? because and that's and that's the human. That's really aspect. what he's trying to escape. Yes, it's really, and so and then that. I sit yeah. there and I look at that, and his dad left, and he left his son sitting at my desk. His son, what? Yeah, he was just sitting there, and so then this poor kid just stands up and he pushes a dad's chair and he goes, sorry to waste your time. And I go, you're fine, man. And then he just leaves. And I was like, this, this is what makes it depressing because yeah. fucking this kid came in for information and his dad comes in trying to fucking, first off, I would have mopped the floor of that mother. <laughs> if he had fucking, if he had pushed me a little bit more, I'd been like, yeah, this, this is a good hill to die on. <laughs> I'm going to rip that Astro's mask right off his face. Like, yeah, so I just, just got back from calling my boss a coward. Yeah, sir. Exactly. you think I'm scared <laughs> yeah, of you, yeah, buddy? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, no, he's I, in charge of my entire career. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, so I just just shit like that, man, just drove me nuts. So, um, but yeah, so I go into the special warfare scout job, and so my job was to um, conduct like PSTs and uh, mentor and train and get all these kids ready. And I, I post about this on Instagram when I left recruiting. I think the most rewarding part of that job was seeing these kids, these young men and women who genuinely want to be part of something bigger than themselves and they want to do it at the highest level. Mm. Watching them succeed, watching a kid who physically didn't know how to swim, uh, teaching him how to physically swim and have water confidence, teaching him the combat side stroke, which is a stroke they use, and then watching him go through the EOD pipeline. I don't know if he made it or not, but like from ground zero of a kid, just skinny, nervous, can't swim, wants to do something better than himself, and just watching them evolve and become the young men and women that I put into the fleet, mm. that was always cool. It's fucking incredible. So, yeah. Now, I, like I showed one screenshot of this kid text me. He's a SEAL now, but he texts me. He's like, hey, RP1, I just want to let you know that uh, I secured Hell Week, which is like their hardest week. And he goes, I just can't thank you enough for preparing me for this pipeline. So it's like after all he had just experienced and everything he'd been through, the wherewithal to be like, finally got my phone back. I, my legs are broken. Like, yeah. And he goes, I'm going to text the guy that made it happen. You know oh, what I mean? Yeah. So that's, that shit, that's, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. That's a legacy. That's a good That's feel. really one of the best things in military is being able to see, uh, you know, the fruits of your labor yeah, come through 100%. like that. 100%. But, I mean, that's just so incredible. But while you were scouting applicants. That's right. The Pentagon was scouting you. The Pentagon called me. Because you're the most catfish man in the world. Yes. Right? That is me. I was at one time. It's, it's, it's Hang on really. Hang Move the mic for a second. And go ahead and uh, hit that one right there. What? <laughs> get it. No, I'm sorry. I'm just, you know. Yeah. I mean, I I give them the images. Oh yeah. yeah. So yeah, I'm, it's how it. There you go. Give him a little. There we go. Perfect. There he is. Oh, there he. There he is. 
Uh, What's it like? <laughs> tell everyone, because no one hears our phone calls that would get us canceled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, it's every day. Yeah, that's still, I would say at this point right now, the year of our Lord, 2024, um, I would say probably once every three days, I get a DM from somebody saying somebody's using my photos or likeness somewhere else. And now it has gotten to the point that- And it's your, it's your fault. It's, it's my fault. Yeah, it's, well, it's uh, no, fault. a lot it's of it, it, well, I yeah, no, a lot of it is very accusatory. Um, a lot of them, they're like, you promised me the world. I'm like, I didn't say nothing, Bertha. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. why don't you chill out? And um, I've seen the screenshots too. You shared them with me. Yeah. Of the yeah. screenshots of alleged Mike right. texting them. And it's like, <laughs> it's it's the most broken English. Oh, it's horrific. Without yeah. getting canceled, I can't do it. <laughs> right. But you have to do like, the exit. <laughs> yeah, I'm not doing it. <laughs> yeah. You can get what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, they're pirates in some countries. But, yeah. Like, it's the most obvious, not a real interaction ever. Yes. Like, it's literally like that photo there. Like, that's one that's commonplace. Yeah. And then it's always like, my, you know, my brothers in arms need help with this fundraiser. Hey, oh, Send yeah, it to yeah. me. It's always, they're always, they're, what I've learned from my years of being a part of this is they're always looking for money or anything to blackmail you with. So I always tell the person who, you know, messages me if they seem okay um if they're not fucking yelling at me saying you i i we were supposed to meet at this coffee shop what the fuck you loser and all right whatever yeah um it's like meet me at coffee shop yeah it's always like it's literally yeah yeah. but um i've always i always tell them like i you know please report the profile please block them cut communications also i hope you didn't give them anything you can't get back yeah because a lot of times i'm at the i said this on the howard stern show um, the most which you got, which I got the Howard, what Stern, was on show, Howard yeah. Stern show. <laughs> yeah. That's a big deal for me. <laughs> and the yeah. boomers watching. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, so I, this one woman had paid just a lump sum of 15 grand to a f- catfish profile. Um, because he quote, he needed a, a plane ticket to get back because his unit left him, which doesn't happen. His unit left him in some country. He needed- I mean, that's not what, but yeah. <laughs> so it's Actually, just he was all- a deserter. He yeah. didn't get left. He yeah. deserted. Yeah. And, but um, all, yeah, all these stupid stories don't make any sense, but they tug on the heartstrings of these poor, usually pretty, you know, lonely people. Preying on vulnerable yeah. people. Yeah. It is It is a horrible crime to yeah. prey on such vulnerable, lonely yeah. people. Yeah. yeah. So it's just like, yeah, that's the most lump sum I've heard um, at once. Like 15K out the bank account to that's this stranger. That's wild. That's wild. It's but wild. The Pentagon was like, we're going to... We're yes. going to use this for good. <laughs> oh, I see. What you're We're yeah. going to make him oh, an see. influencer. So what happened right? was, um, yeah, so I have a decent uh, presence on social media. It's not as big as it used to be. I don't really post too, too much anymore. But um, Just yes. by followers. Yeah, I buy followers. Oh, we can talk about that. Yeah. No, not right um, now. But uh, um, hey, yeah. Mike Sims official, there I am. Um, I love that, that my shitty picture to make fun of myself with that goatee is still up there. <laughs> yeah, I hope you pin it. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I think that was my attention getter for some memes. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I had just come off leave and I had a beard and I shaved that off and I was like, yeah, what a look. I love how you're pretending like that's not where you'll land in six <laughs> years. Like, you're, this isn't going to be you. You're like, oh, this is so dumb. What we're doing, this is called a dry fire. Yeah, this is, <laughs> this is a, yeah, yeah, it's a dry run for sure yeah, for when yeah. I retire and start a Creed cover band. <laughs> yeah. Called Sacrifice. Sacrifice, that's a good one. I know, I know. I've, you see that, I've fucking thought about this. Yeah, yeah. either Sacrifice or Weathered. Yeah, yeah. And um, so, Lord have mercy. Yeah, so Pentagon calls me uh, because at uh this is a year ago <laughs> yeah i hate looking at my own instagram um but uh pentagon calls me and is the representative from the public affairs office like uh section of the pentagon mm-hmm. and she said hey we are starting this kind of pilot program to use active duty because kind of the way it goes and uh, i mean everybody for listening and you know more than anybody yeah the landscape of military influencers so to speak are veterans usually Yes, for the most part. Yeah, There's so, no rules associated yeah, with right, it. Right, exactly. Unless so, you're an officer right. <laughs> so, in the Navy. <laughs> right. Oh, my God. Keep going. No, don't make me do this. And uh, <laughs> so, oh, that's a great picture, too. Um, so they were like, you are somebody who has a unique voice. You have a kind of passionate following, so to speak. And the Navy kind of wants to use you as a poster child, me and a couple other people, um, to the Navy's going to sponsor you kind of in a weird way you're going to be on active duty do all your active duty things but you're going to be kind of a full-time influencer for the navy my first question was like do i need to change anything they said no we will we like you because you are who you are okay same i was like bet so i post that picture of my butthole anyway (laughs) and i was like u.s navy anyway no but then they put you on a game show is that what happened (laughs) (laughs) yeah and uh, oh jesus 
And so Dude, you gotta stop. Uh, Dude, I'm batting a million right so, now. So um, you teeing me up on purpose? So it yeah. was a it was a pilot program. Me and yeah. a couple other active duty people got it. Um it has since been shut down. But how long did it last? I would probably I think six months. Uh no, not even Three? two months. Yeah. Three months. From the, like that. from the second I got an admiral's letter stating my new kind of position, uh it got shut down within two months. But uh for various reasons. But um it was funny because I had sat in a meeting uh with the Pentagon representatives and then uh, all these big name influencers and comedians and like movie stars and stuff. And I'd pitched all this stuff because good ideas. It was quid pro quo, right? Good it was I- like, we, we had some ideas. We had some ideas. Oh, we I had told some you ideas. about it for sure. Yeah, we had no, some ideas. No, but like we had um, all kinds of people and uh, I had pretty One much. One of them came to fruition yeah, without no, us. Actually, a few of them did <laughs> without us, yeah. And uh, so the idea was like, we're going to have these active duty people go on your show and reach an audience that isn't military, but to also show that military people can be normal. We're not yeah. just drones. We're not just weirdos. A lot of us are, but whatever. Um, but so I was I was uh, teed up to have quite a run of my favorite uh, podcasts and stuff. So kind of upset that I, that one way, but my ideas came to fruition, um, and I got no credit for them. So yeah, it didn't benefit you or me. Which no, is yeah, kind no, of, <laughs> yeah. I was which trying is to kind of the goal. I was trying to glob you on. Yeah, yeah. but um, you're like, here's my attaché. Yeah, that's and I'm right. I'm just there with cardboard, like, hey. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know. So no, I, I had some really really cool opportunities uh, kind of taken away from me through no fault of my own. Just uh, the way that the program kind of was run to the ground because, uh, how do I even phrase this? Because they didn't know what to do with it, and you know, a lot of old head, so to speak, up yeah. to the big level, they didn't like how this doesn't feel right. But Can I tell you what I think happened? For sure. Opinion, you you may. Yeah, you may. Yeah, so... I'm um, not allowed to say much, but... No, no. Um, and this is stuff Mike told me that I could say <laughs> pretending to be him. No, what I what I really think happened is that. They had no idea what they were doing. Yeah. Um, and so... And this is this is what I do day in and day out, is that businesses will reach out to an influencer to try and get a level of authenticity added to the marketing and yeah. or branding of a product or an item. Yeah. Right. And in this case, they reached out to people that are in the Navy. They want to try the show, the Navy, in a more authentic and genuine way because it is 2014, 15, 16, whenever you were doing that stuff before. Yeah. That was the initial wave of the military influencer. Yeah. That was just a little crest to yeah. the tidal wave that's coming, na- that's yeah. come forth now. Yeah. And so um, they just had no idea. And what they asked people to do, they didn't really understand, which is like, they won't, you can do whatever you want, but then you do whatever you want. They're like, whoa, whoa. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. no, because yeah. you can't do that. And I, I thought it has, I think they'll, they'll probably bring it back, but I thought yeah. it had so much potential yeah, on I told it. the article was still up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, atomic land drop. <laughs> I guess you didn't, what is it, slip away, huh, buddy? So, uh, if we're going to talk about that. So, I was doing static line jumps, and uh, yeah, you can play the video. I think there's some audio, and eh, whatever, but play the video, so. People can. So this is from Instagram. This is just unfortunately caught on camera. Yeah, not that unfortunate. Boom, boom. There the boy. <laughs> Look at him. Uh, that is not service related, right there. <laughs> that is uh, not a chance. Yeah. If there's that. anyone who can help you, it's Re Medical. Hit the link in the description yeah. to get your benefits today. E- Out of all the original content I try to make like self self deprecating or funny or whatever this is sitting at a cool like 15 million views on instagram yeah. <laughs> just me breaking my spine um no what happened there honestly was it was static line so static line shoots are about as steerable as a boat in a parking lot you know I mean? you can't yeah. there's not much you can do you can slip you do all these things you're told to do right but plf uh parachute landing fall is what you're supposed to do but on that and that dz it was this huge huge dz in virginia and they had this big like uh, track around the initial place, and I just got taken away from the, <laughs> the drop zone and was just coming straight down, as you saw in the video, right onto like the concrete track. And more embarrassing than not, and you saw in that video, was the other uh, team guys that were around. Yeah. And they were just like, oh shit, he's coming in fast. <laughs> yeah. And so everybody got to see me. Um, and I think I was trying to save myself from embarrassment because I can literally hear them talking as I'm coming to the ground. I'm like, fuck. And so for some reason, I lifted my legs once to kind of look beyond them because I, I honestly I didn't want to break my ankle. I was mm-hmm. I was probably going to if I tried to do a, a normal landing fall, and so I was like I looked beyond my legs once, and then kind of looked to the horizon again, 
and then I lifted him again as to like do another check. And then by the time I'd lift him again, I was just in a perfect leg drop and I just came right down <laughs> and just hit the ground. Cause Atta boy. Yeah. So it was cool. I had a bruised spine. It was pretty cool. <laughs> well, I'm I'm happy for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, finally. 50 million views. How's it feel? Yeah, no, it's just so funny that like out of everything that I've done that makes me look cool. That's the one thing that's that I've your legacy. <laughs> that's my legacy. That is your legacy. The worst PLF on earth, just in front of a bunch of guys. It's, like, hey, it's a legacy, though. It is a legacy. <laughs> but as we're coming to a close here, and I, again, I want to thank you so much for everything. You know, of I love course. you. Oh, you're the best. Right. And if you're looking for a way better podcast than this, <laughs> check out Standby on um, Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Mm, all the all the audio. It's audio only. So audio only. I like to do short form and just kind of, uh, hey, there's the logo. Yeah. I like to do short form, uh, usually 20 to 45 minutes at the most, just kind of talk about what's going on. Ooh, like that perfect rating. Just kind of look at that, um, nice talk about my day and stuff. Um, and then sometimes if I'm in the area, I'll have guests. You did a two-parter with me, which was great. If you want to check out that episode, you talked about a lot of things you never talked about. So yeah, I, I definitely I, appreciate that. I literally haven't, and I don't think I ever will again. Yeah, yeah. But, so um, it's locked in my in my podcast vault. Yeah, go if again. There's way better stuff than that, but go check it out. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate that. Um, but you know, you've seen so much happen, especially uh, in the military influencer landscape. Mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, you talk about this a lot. I. Uh, I don't know how to feel about it, but I'm curious what your optics and perspective are on it and, like, military culture as a whole. Because you, you have this weird line where you, you you ride between, like, veteran yeah, and active duty. Yeah. I think it's because the jobs you've had, there's a lot of off time in general. Yeah. So, I mean, what do you, what do you think about it? It is funny, too, because anytime I um, do, like, <clears throat> big events and stuff, uh, it's usually veteran run. Yeah. And um, back when I used to make appearances when I was way cooler – Everyone would always be like, oh, so when did you get out? I'm like, no, I'm active duty. I have Every, yeah. Everyone's always like, what? You're not a vet. Everyone thinks I'm out because I'm still doing you know, content sometimes. But um, I will say, I think initially, initially, wow, initially it was, uh, it was coming from a good place of people representing the uniform and doing all the right stuff. But in a sense, uh, and I'm sure a lot of people agree with this, it has devolved into this egocentrical, very um, self, like, uh, gratifying. It's mm. all about me. I wear a uniform, but this is me. And I hate that because the whole point of the military because it's the team. It's an all-hands mm. effort. And I try to involve community in everything I do because that's the community that has given me a platform is the Navy. And so I may not love it every single day, but it is my unfortunate family sometimes. So mm-hmm. I try to represent um, the best of us and sometimes the worst of us, but also it's us. It's us. It's empirically us. Yeah. And I feel like a lot of these uh, kind of influencers are just about them. And the second they get a chance to take off the uniform and make it about them, that's that's really what they want to do. You see a lot of these uh, active duty people now getting a following, which is cool. But a lot of it is disingenuous because it's a lot of, you know, there's people out there paying for followers, thousands, uh, $13,000 to get a, a following on social media is bananas. And then to sit there in uniform and talk about things you have nothing to do with and make it about yourself is insane. Yeah. It's I just, um yeah, it's I, just, a, I think disc- it's I don't use the word I don't know what the right word is yeah. to describe how I feel about it it's but gross. like it's gross it's gross I mean all I could think to say is that like you know making a living off of uh taking advantage of vulnerable people is 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 sad yeah no and that's I feel like a lot of these people do so um unfortunately I got I came in on a good time everybody kind of had the right idea but then the second uh popularity and sometimes money gets involved it skews people's judgment so I just think if you're going to do anything on a platform representing an organization, represent the organization. Don't make it about you. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I just, yeah, I just, I wish people would hear that calling. But the people that I'm talking to, you know who you are and you suck, but uh, I think they don't know they suck because they're too busy buying followers. <laughs> they're not being authentic. If you, if you want to make good Mike, content, I'm right here. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. If you want to make good content and actually, like, feel at one with your community that you're representing, then make it authentic. If you're paying for something, then it's not real. You know what I mean? If you're creating. And I just, I hate that. I hate that that is now becoming the front line for the military. So now if you look at the military and content creators, you see all these fucking fake, absolute, uh, nothing to say, no experiences, uh, idiots talking about stuff they don't know about. But because it's on a phone and you're seeing it in front of you and you see all the likes and the paid comments, you're going, oh, this must be right. Mm. So if anything, it's bad for recruiting, even though they say it's good, it's not. 
um, people see through that shit. They see through the fakeness. One thing I talked about, we had a big recruiter conference thing and um, public affairs for recruiting uh, was there and they were talking about like, oh, you know, Petty Officer has a big following and I said this in front of all these recruiters. I was like, these kids, whether they're looking through a phone screen and they're looking at your eyes, they see the falseness. They're not dumb. They're looking for a job. They're looking for experiences. They're looking for a little bit of give and take. But the second you start talking about, I'm so great because of this, this, and this, they go, no, I'm, I'm good. They've seen fakeness their entire lives coming up, you know, with their cell phones mm -hmm. in their hands. So once they see it in person and then they see uh, that you're not all you're cracked up to be, they're going to move away. And yeah. just because they follow you on a platform doesn't mean they like you. Get over yourselves. Well, <laughs> any final thoughts? I couldn't, I'm not going to interject. You're, you're no, cooking. no, it's good. No. Let God cook and Mike Cincy too. Yeah, no, I appreciate you, man. And uh, yeah, the pancakes are good in Nashville. That's, that's my closing remarks. Pancakes are good in Nashville. Thank you very much for joining us here and we'll see you next time. Thanks, buddy.